now. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Westeros with everyone's favorite currently ongoing show set in mm -hmm. uh, the wide, wild world of A Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, thanks for coming in and joining us for a new episode of A Sea of Spears. Uh, players, how is everyone doing today? Let's start with the bastard. Kevin, how's it going? How you doing? Introduce your character. Hi, I'm Kevin Zarnicky, and I currently have a head cold so bad that I can't hear out of my right ear. I'll be playing Vanin Rivers, the bastard of the Blackwoods and the Brackens. He's doing all right. He's been hitting things with swords and making a lot of money betting. Like, a lot of money. Like, I'm worried Rusty's going to screw me over a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, Decker will not be hitting your bank accounts, I promise. Uh, who do you want to introduce next, Kevin? Please. Let's take it to your lady love, Felicia. Hi, I'm Felicia uh, Zimmerman, and I play Raina Nymerian. I am the heir of the house. It is a Dornish house, so as the eldest female child, I, I actually have the right to be heir. And uh, I also thought that, or I'm looking at the chat now, Rusty, stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, uh, I actually, my big action scene so far has been participating in a duel of honor uh, against a young man who had accused our house of murdering his house's small folk. Uh, and uh, I did, I did win that duel uh but then afterwards he appears to have succumbed to his wounds and died according to our source uh which is illyrio malpatis and then i have a sister a twin sister who is just a few minutes younger than <laughs> me and that is Bela. <laughs> hi um i'm erica and i play Bela. And yes, I am the younger sister by just a few short minutes. And that, you know, brings this sort of burden off my shoulders and I get to do all the fun things that the heir doesn't get to do, like uh, participate in jousts and uh, not have to be head of the, <laughs> the house. So I get to be a little bit more sneaky and not front and center of attention, which is, kind of how my character likes to be anyhow um so yeah i'm looking forward to today there's more jousting and uh somehow i'm still in the tournament which is wild and and we're gonna see how far we can climb up this thing before it gets like holy cow these these people are really good and i'm just mediocre so i'm a little bit above my station a bit um we'll go to my younger brother uh luke harris Hello, uh, my name is Robert. I'll be playing the always sober and chaste Luke Harris. <laughs> always. The uh, oldest son of the house uh, and third oldest child. Of the um, I am also still in the uh, turning. I've yet to be unhorsed, which is probably going to end really fast very soon. Uh, and who does that leave? The uh, sober uh, Sir Luke Harris, uh, who remains in your family. Uh, probably the wild one of the family, the younger brother. So wild. <laughs> the winning archery contest and breaking yes, heart. Uh, the, the... <laughs> um, yes, hi. Uh, I'm Ash. I play Adam Nymerian, the youngest sibling of the house. Um, who is much better with a bow than he is with a horse, um, which is a really low bar. Um, who has also been making some money betting, not quite as much as Sir Vannon, but is still uh, doing his bit for the house. Um, though the um, he's thrown into some social situations that are a bit terrifying for him. Aww. Yeah, I, I thought you were actually going to start that sentence with uh, Adam's much better with a bow than he is humans. 
Like, <laughs> very adorably uh, socially awkward when, you know, the Queen of Thorns is hollering at you and, and, and inspecting the goods. Uh, and, you know, that sort of fun stuff. Um, uh, but yes, Adam has also been kind of serving as the, uh, the pint-sized master of coin for House Nymerian, which has been very important because the pile of coin of House Nymerian has not been pint-sized. Uh, Felicia already mentioned uh, Illyrio Mopatis, uh, the magister from Essos, uh, who has been cheerfully backing any bet that the house wants to make. He's taken whatever bet people want to offer uh, so far on any of the events. And it's basically just been the joust and the squire's joust and the archery contest to date. But he's like, sure, whatever. Uh, and it feels like he's going to throw in all the, the money of Essos uh, at y'all, just cheerfully taking whatever bet uh, cheerfully agreeing with uh, whatever intuition you guys share for like whatever bet you make uh, good naturedly uh, you know supporting the opposite of that bet as, as he puts down you know 50 gold dragons or whatever like it's nothing um, so he has just been kind of cheerfully uh, sharing drinks with you guys and hanging out uh, and eating some snacks and uh, handing over gold dragons by the veritable bushel um, all week uh, here at the tournament um, and he just seems to kind of unerringly find you guys or be easy to find uh, in fairness he's a, a, a kind of big heavy set brightly blue dyed beard and hair uh, associate merchant in like bright silks and exotic colors and stuff um, so he's been easy to spot uh, and has been an NPC that's been uh, pretty friendly with the house. Uh, we've got some NPCs that have been not so friendly with the house. Kevin has been making friends with all the members of House Kettle Black. Uh, we've, had, ah. we've had several <laughs> uh, several knights express uh, frustration uh, and confusion in equal measure at the martial successes of the Lady Bela. Um, we've had actually not a ton of people taking direct offense at Lucaris, rather startlingly. Uh, but it also <laughs> comes down to... time. Yeah, yeah, he'll grow on him. Uh, but, you know, it just depends on who you're up against in the tourney sometimes. Uh, Ash, uh, Adam's mostly been making friends. Uh, Adam might not feel like it. Uh, but of particular note, uh, after, you know, in, in yesterday... Uh, you know, last evening, uh, and we're going to pick this up uh, this morning in game. Um, you've been getting a lot of yay gratitude towards the generous young Adam the Archer, uh, and and lots of people cheering you on uh, for your your victory in the archery yeah. contest. So That's you've been, what did you do? You've Ash? been clearly making some <laughs> friends. Um, later, Reyna, been making a few friends. You. Uh, you know, the Queen of Thorns didn't, like, stab you with a knitting needle or anything. Uh, she let her words do her hurting for her. But that's just normal. Uh, Garland Tyrell has been quite chivalrous and courteous towards you. Uh, Alisane Mormont seems to have taken a, a liking to your, uh, your lot of, of uh, ladies running a house and doing their own fighting. She's kind of, you know, warmed up to you guys. Uh, so oh, look at this. You know, yeah. And of course, you've all made friends with House Lugas uh, of different stripes. Uh, the boisterous drinking man uh, versus the, the bookish younger brother. They've warmed to different members of the house in different ways. But uh, not to worry, there will also be some new guy on the radar uh, later today. You'll be uh, able to hang out with them a little bit more. <laughs> um, last session, uh, we spent the whole stinking four hours uh, going down a list of people just swinging by the pavilion tent. We had ransoms get paid, uh, some of them rather uh, grouchily. Uh, we had several ransoms get accidentally dropped into the mud. Uh, just so clumsy. It's lots of knights. They don't put a lot of points into agility. You know, so just they accidentally <laughs> throw coin purses into the mud and step on them and stuff. It happens. Uh, we had a squire napping. A uh, couple of... Uh, characters that are listed in my GM notes word document as the fuckos of Frey. Uh, little Walder Frey and Big Walder Frey uh, grabbed young Robert Frey 
and we're just dragging him into the woods tied to a pole like some fucking Ewoks. Uh, so you had that that you guys put a stop to uh, with the help of uh, the Lady Alisane who rescued her nominal squire, uh, little Robert, um, the good Frey so far that you guys have met. Um, you had a good heart-to-heart uh, with Robar Royce, the second son of Bronze Yon Royce, uh, and uh, kind of third in line, I guess, uh, to be the heir of uh, the, the Royce lands uh, there. And he shared a bit more of the backstory about uh, young Oris, your squire, who was also sharing some more of his backstory, uh, talking about his other mother, um, who you guys were swiftly charmed by the uh, the gleefully salacious nature and the delicious baked goods of uh, down there on the edges of Flea Bottom, uh, as, as you guys took a shining uh, to the nursemaid that that raised Oris for several years. While others of you, you know, later in the day, you heard about the the more tragic side of your squire's mysterious backstory uh, regarding the kind of shame uh, that was brought to the ancient and proud House Royce, uh, and by Westerosi standards, the normal treatment, but by modern standards, the quite gross mistreatment and punishment that was heaped upon Oris's mother, uh, with her being forced to kind of take the black. Uh, the way women do, uh, by getting sent off not only to be a septa, uh, but being forced to take the vows of the Silent Sisters so that she would never again speak of her shame. Uh, so that's pretty friggin' harsh compared to the nice old lady that flirted with you guys and gave you a bunch of food. Like, that was a big downer. Um, but, you know, uh, Oris has more than one mom with more than one story. Um... So yeah, we saw some movement on the backstory notes. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, role-playing that potentially started with I'm here for the bastard, either to discuss a bastard, pay a bastard, drop off money on behalf of a bastard, or just insult somebody by calling them a bastard. But that was a good a good streak uh, with chat's help. Which brings me to the final character, lurking directly overhead and just a little bit off to one side. Uh, we have the Iron Throne, uh, which is one of the central symbols and even, in a way, characters. Uh, of course, in George R. R. Martin's wild and woolly world of Westeros. Uh, and you, dear viewer, can manipulate the Iron Throne. You might notice that HP meter overhead already going down. That is the horsepower of whomever holds the Iron Throne as you cheer and subscribe and toss fits and all that good stuff, uh, the Iron Throne loses knights, and with it, horsepower. And when you seize the Iron Throne, and the HP meter fills or empties, I guess depending on how you think about it, uh, whenever it resets, you have claimed the Iron Throne. You have risen from the chaos of Westeros and seized King's Landing. And that lets you uh, give one in-game destiny point to the character of your choice. That can be a player character or an NPC. It can help or hinder the party, because this is a George R.R. R. Martin jam, and sometimes bad shit happens to good people, or good shit happens to bad people, or bad shit happens to everybody, because whatever. Uh, sometimes, you know, dragon fire's indiscriminate. Things happen. People get hurt. So, you can manipulate the narrative uh, like a child pulling the wings off of flies, any time that the Iron Throne hit point bar uh, resets. And whoever sits the Iron Throne at the end of a session uh, in <clears throat> about three hours and 45 minutes, uh, they will have claimed the Iron Throne and held it for the day. Uh, and that will let them uh, give a royal boon to a house of their choice, not just a given character, uh, but you can choose any old house. Uh, it could be the PCs uh, that are the young scions of House Nymerian, or it could be your favorite house from the books, favorite house from the show. It doesn't even quite have to be a house. Uh, I decided, like, if somebody really likes some other kind of faction, like if someone's like, just fuck yeah, I love me some gold cloaks, or whatever. <laughs> uh, like, yay, I love the Night's Watch. Uh, you know, that could happen, stuff like that. 
Uh, so any kind of big group, like a house um, or, or something like that, you can give them a fat ass boon, uh, and they will get some pretty big plot or mechanical advantage uh, in upcoming episodes as soon as I can work them in. Um, so keep an eye on the Iron Throne directly overhead, but also keep an eye on the Iron Throne in game, because currently sitting atop it, of course, is the Usurper King, Robert Baratheon. First of his name. Yeah, see? Mixed feelings from House Tiberian. <laughs> you don't know how to feel about Bobby B. He's a riddle wrapped in an enigma, locked inside a puzzle box, rattling around an empty beer keg. Uh, I think you're giving him <laughs> way too much credit. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, I declare, like, he's better than Adam does. Yes, uh, he's also not exactly up Adam's alley and vice versa. I'd say, honestly, of the members of House Nymerian, he is the least likely to really, like, respect or recognize the value of Adam and vice versa. Uh, but yeah. uh, the house has complicated feelings about Robert Baratheon, and if it makes you feel better, and it shouldn't, Robert Baratheon also has complicated feelings about House Nymerian. Um, so, with that, I believe that we are just about ready to go. Uh, my plan was to kick us off with the next tourney event uh, the next morning. Does anyone have any pressing role play that they wanted to do, though, later, uh, you know, last evening, uh, after you guys handled the comings and goings around the pavilion tent, we kind of called it a night there, but it doesn't have to be the case. Uh, if there is a particularly pressing player character uh, conversation that you guys wanted to deal with, or some important role play prior to the morning, that is certainly potentially still on the table. So let's hand it over to the heir to House Nymerian, the Lady Reyna, played by the heir to House Zimmermathian, the Lady Felicia, because she had a finger up, and I think that means she wanted some. That is correct. I would like to have a brief discussion with my highborn family <laughs> that excludes Oris. Maybe he could be doing something outside the tent. I don't know. But since we received a truth bomb about his parentage while he was gone, do you guys remember this? Yeah. He doesn't know that, I don't think. Do we want to tell him, or do we want to sit on it until after he wins the Squire's Just? <laughs> uh, that okay. might be a good idea. As um, a quick out-of-character reminder, mm -hmm. yeah. um, he told you that, that Wooly Will did tell him who his mother was, and Wooly Will told him that Wooly Will was not his father, but did not tell him who his father was. I just remember that it was like six sessions ago, so we're talking like five months or something. Um, yeah. So he did know who his mother was, but he didn't tell you. Uh, but you did notice whenever a Royce was jousting, uh, he was kind of gripping the tourney fence, white knuckled, uh, and kind of glaring stone facedly. Uh, so you did, uh, you know, in theory, he knows. Uh, he did seem to have some mixed feelings about House Royce. But every time you guys got close to asking him about it, uh, his fellow bastard, the ever-compassionate Vannon Rivers, was like, well, keep your secrets then. Uh, and it kept telling you guys, like, not to push him about So, um, from Now I'm from the things. Yeah, you're just... <laughs> you know, they're <laughs> kind of Riverlanders, you know. Um, but yeah, so, so you think that he knows. Uh, you don't know if he knows the details of what happened to his mother, yada yada. Right, and I don't think he realizes because Wooly Will told him that he that Wooly Will is not his father. But yes. according to House Royce, he is Horace's father. Yes, yes and mysteriously Wooly Will owes grandfather or grandfather owes Wooly Will something. So I propose that we don't say anything about the mystery of his father until later. Like, after the Squire's tournament well. later. Not, like, on the way back to Winter's Rest. 
just like, after he after his jousting performance is done. Before the melee. Okay. So the plan just talk to him about it sometime, but not just now. Is that is that a fair summation of right. the discussion? Uh, and uh, Adam, I mean, he's the one who I'm gauging. He has the most interaction with Oris, you know, one on one. So if you feel like my plan is a good one, then just a nod would be good. <laughs> uh, sister, do you imagine Oris has more information than we do? I imagine that him having even more uncertainty tossed into him right now will upset his internal balance, which is not that great. Yeah, um, I mean, he already seemed pretty... Um, I mean, that was, what, three days that he was pretty kind of sullen and quiet because of one bit of information he was given. I'm not sure now is the best time to layer more ambiguity on top of that. Um, I guess my question is, what information do we have that he doesn't? Well, he only has one version of, of the story, whereas we have two. The only thing he doesn't know is that they still think Willy Will is his father. That Willy Will took on the burden and the punishment. Well, I mean, but it's not the father. I mean, that opens but, but, but he but he knows that. I don't think I don't he think understands he'll... the depth of the punishment that Wooly will I mean he was banished basically and he took I mean he said that he would never cut his beard and ever <laughs> and he goes around I mean he doesn't have a home, he's a broken down knight. He's getting old. Um I just Mark, don't right? think I just don't think he really understands the situation. I don't really want him to right now. I mean, if you want, I could try and find an opportunity to have a quiet word, maybe kind of gauge um, what he knows and how he feels about it, really. Excellent. I can maybe try and get him to open up a bit. I mean, I won't tell him anything you just to you know kind of sound uh, just sound out a little bit I think you would talk to me trust me as opposed to the rest of us oh, I, I didn't mean like that <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to upset but his I, chances I, I, I think we... yeah maybe wait until after after he's done competing and things I agree with that. <laughs> mm. That's all I was. I just wanted to make sure that nobody misstepped before that. Uh, I don't know about Missteps. you. Oh. <laughs> no. And that's yeah, all. I, I have no questions for him. I have questions for grandfather, but not for him. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I just have gold for Oris. I have. I, 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 well, I certainly have money for him, not not gold, but um. I put fourteen good. gold dragons on him to win, and wow. then he won, and nice. they're his. I I just took he, uh, he he left me some of he left me his money to look after, and I took the liberty of betting it on him, and so he he gets more of that back. I think he, he might be cross that I that I did that, but hopefully more happy that. Uh, I have doubled his money. Always oh, nice. Worth, if he doesn't need all the gold I've got waiting for him, he can give it back to Wooly Will. You do know that and... he'll, you know he'll try and like keep you from giving that to him. And I'll straight yeah. up tell him, well, yeah. put it in your boss's retirement fund. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the record, Oris is just seeing to some horses right now. Uh, which, with the number of you and the number of horses you have, should probably keep him busy more than it already does. But he's off working, so you guys are totally safe. <clears throat> and let us not forget the ongoing conspiracy against us to frame us for killing small folk. 
Right. And, and from also. But that's settled though, right? Right. Oh, I mean, sure. In the Army we are innocent of that. Was the goal to frame us, or was the goal to get us to kill this boy? Yeah, I mean, like in theory, it's settled with the with the jewel. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, Lord Adam will let it go. Um, oh. And it also, oh. and it also, it is also still you know we don't know what actually happened. So those things are still extant. Uh, but remember. The, Lord Adam the has let it go because he's dead. Sorry? Yeah, Danit died. Remember, uh, Lord Adam Danit has let it go because he done died. Oh, uh, your big sister killed him in the duel. I did not kill him in the duel. <laughs> <laughs> right, I so, scared him. Right, okay, I forgot about that. So his successor might not let it uh, go. And <laughs> also remember that see, the succession of House Danit is currently in question. Okay. Uh, because yep. he was the only son and eldest, uh, I mean, because well, he's the only son, he was, of course, the eldest yep. son, but uh, their daughter Some, has been will get it eventually. for some months. Has so been... the, the house lands might uh, revert back to House Ironwood, uh, you're not sure, or if not, House Ironwood might choose a successor to lift up, you know, some hedge knight or something to become the new House Danid. Uh, but yeah, nobody's sure what's going on with House Danit right now. The yeah, old like, lord died, Adam died this week, and the only other sibling is missing. So just, it's some extra quirks in there, and it's some more shit that Robert Baratheon's putting off, because he's like, fuck it, yeah. I've got a tourney! So he's just yeah, not no, I, talking no, I, about I, it. No, I 100% I, I get all that. Um, my point was, like, whoever does eventually get hold of it may have a grudge against us potentially i think you're overestimating the importance of these small folk it's not about that it's about it's literally not about point. that somebody it's used about... us as a cudgel and then they can use that as an excuse to try to declare crap against us and don't forget uh was it Baylor or reyna that got a poison blade as a gift from an anonymous source Baylor. that was me well, you want to see it? That surface level batter is in salt in a dual bottle. That, that's done. I'm more concerned about who thinks we're foolish enough to use this way. This is a Iron conspiracy against obvious. House Danny, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. But we were used as the cat's book. Uh, I think it's yeah, I, House I Ironwood. Use, but... they, since they used to... The Dan, it used to be our, our banner house, right? And... And what better way to absorb their territory than to use us to off who backs their own Ironwood? Bobby Baratheon? The king? I guess the, 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 the kind Bobby, of key no. thing for thinking about this is who benefits the most because that's who probably did it. Like who, who benefits from how Stan it being thrown into disarray like this. My money's Iron on the Lannisters. Lannisters. Why? That's a... Mm. Isn't it always? <laughs> I don't know, like, we don't... That's it. <laughs> we haven't dealt with them much, like... I... Oh, that's entirely Kevin metagaming. Oh. <laughs> okay. I have no I mean... that whatsoever. Keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, and try not to kill anybody else. I'm sorry. You're the only one who's killed a named person. I know. <laughs> we're, we're gonna call you Killer Ray. Behold the hypocrisy of the heir to your <laughs> How could you say this? <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Don't kill anyone. She said as she wiped blood from her blade. <laughs> uh, so, any more, <laughs> any more in character conversation as opposed to out of character pointing out the gross hypocrisy of my lovely wife? <laughs> uh, I'm going to get some wine and go to bed. Yeah, I'm going to need some more wine after this. I uh, just want to rest and make sure I don't have any injuries or damage or anything before the next time I'm going to take injuries and damage. 
Yes. Uh, we'll go ahead and say, for the most part, you guys were resting. Uh, there was a chase scene where you went after the fuckos of Frey. Uh, but we will say that it was restful enough. And also because you're resting in comfort and eating fine food and drinking fine wine and socializing with friendly NPCs and yada yada. Uh, go ahead and erase any damage you're currently sitting on. Uh, we won't do the normal song and dance of requiring rolls. We had a really good session last, uh, you know, two weekends ago. So we'll just say that that was a good enough time to, in very Hobbit-esque fashion, uh, good food, good drink, and good friends erased all your damage. Do Mushrooms! Not, do not get used <laughs> to it. Uh, that will not be how damage works uh, for the most of this campaign. Uh, but, with that said, uh, we are going to jump cut to the next morning. Joggedly early. Uh, it is dawn as the sun rises yeah. over the narrow sea. Um, and looks very shimmery and stuff coming over the water uh, as the horsemanship contest is preparing to start. Uh, this contest actually starts down on the beaches of Blackwater Bay. Um, and then from there, it's going to be a short walk. Uh, if you want to go to the finish line, You can. it's, it's kind of a, a long horseshoe shape for the route. So the riders can take off. People that are watching can line the route along the way. Or you can see riders off and then kind of take the shortcut to go to the finish line. Uh, but it's a strong mixed course uh, that's going to take them along some broad open straightaways, like our opening shot of horses racing along the beach at dawn uh, for nice, you know, dramatic value. Um, and the closing shot is going to be a long straightaway uh, through the, the big lanes of the tourney ground. Um, but other shots are going to be climbing up through some rocky stuff or some switchbacks or weaving through uh, some brightly beribboned trees on the edges of the woods that you've got to like weave through and stuff. Uh, so it's a pretty long course uh, so that the stats of horses will come up throughout. Um, but uh, it's getting ready to start down here on the beach uh, where the ceremonial uh, kickoff of the horse race is overseen by the very pointedly sour-faced Lord Stannis Baratheon of Dragonstone. Yay! Woo! A uh, party over here. <laughs> uh, he's just out to have a good time, like always, uh, by standing there looking like a goddamn statue um, and just kind of glowering at everyone as they arrive, glowering at Grand Maester Pycelle, um, who is standing there in his, his long robes and heavy chain, hunched over by the weight of his knowledge, uh, but the official uh, recorder slash scribe of any royal tourney. So he's standing there at like a small portable lectern, uh, ready to start writing. Stannis is standing there just glowering at everybody uh, with his back to the ocean. Uh, you're all reminded, of course, of Stannis plus ocean plus Dragonstone, the ancestral seat of House Targaryen that he claims as his own. Uh, so you're a little salty about that. Um, you know, and it could, it could be an open insult to the Nymerians here today to put Stannis down here on the waters. Uh, it could just be that Robert Baratheon doesn't do fucking anything at dawn. Uh, so he's not going to come watch the writing contest that you know he doesn't give a, a crap about. But it could pointedly be that Stannis, uh, the master of ships, is down here on the water to glower at you specifically. Maybe he's even glaring at you all a little harder than he's glaring at everybody else. It's hard to say with someone with his usually sunny disposition and cheerful demeanor. Um, <laughs> He is but, a universal clowerer. Yeah. So he's there with his, his neatly trimmed beard and an almost shorn scalp, um, wearing fine clothes, but they don't look it. Like, they just look uncomfortable because he looks so perpetually uncomfortable and, and crabby. Uh, and he's not socializing with anyone. 
There are no pleasantries with any other lords. There aren't really that many lords and knights down here. Uh, you realize, as some of you are kind of prepping and you're looking for, like, who is staying on their horse and looking ready to ride, as opposed to who just kind of showed up on a horse because nobles don't walk. Um, there's not a lot of people really prepping for this that are faces you recognize as people with, you know, uh, formal first and inherited last names. Um, there are a few nobles. Uh, you see some noble ladies uh, that are kind of tittering off to themselves um, in a kind of, you know, good natured, gossipy type of high born lady giggles. Um, uh, and you recognize uh, Lady Meredith Crane, who is the daughter of the Lord of House Crane, um, who is determinedly sitting atop a fine, uh, dappled palfrey. Uh, and she's sitting on it side saddle, um, but you can overhear her kind of giggling with a, another young maiden, and she's got on a hawking glove, and, and she's like, oh, I, I normally wear it when I ride through the countryside, and I, I feel weird being in the saddle without it. Oh, I'm such a twit. <laughs> you know, just kind of making fun of herself for wearing her hawking attire, uh, but it's her riding stuff. Uh, she's talking to the Lady Miranda Royce uh, of the other House Royce, the Royces of the Gates of the Moon. She is the daughter of Lord Nestor Royce, who runs that cadet branch. Um, and, and she is a, a kind of plump and buxom and giggly gal that laughs at the witticism of uh, her apparent friend, or at least acquaintance, from the Reach. Uh, but then, uh, your gaze is pulled away from the cheerfully plump Miranda Royce, who is also, by the way, uh, sitting on a horse, but hers is, like, pointing the other way. She rode a, a fine little palfrey down here, but is clearly not planning to race. Uh, but next to her, and still a horse, uh, is a living legend, uh, Brendan Tully, the Blackfish, and oh. the Fight of the Bloody Gate. Uh, and he's actually still in a traveling cloak, and you notice that there's still some mud on his boots, not on his horse. The horse has been taken care of, uh, but he's sitting there, um, kind of, I don't want to say politely laughing in like a, a patronizing way, but, you know, he's chuckling a bit at the mirth of the young ladies, especially Miranda Royce, uh, who as the Knight of the Bloody Gate, uh, he is acquainted well with the house that oversees the gates of the moon and stuff. Um, and, but then also, you can't help but notice rather jarringly another young lady that is sitting with them, um, and, and she's laughing kind of uproariously at the joke in a very good-natured way, um, but it's also not a very dainty ladylike laugh. Uh, it's almost the adorable, like, giggle snort of the, the young she-bear, Alice Mormont, who you've made the acquaintance of. Uh, but this is uh, a young lady that looks to be of low birth, except that she's on a, a very well-fed and well-cared-for uh, kind of shaggy Garon horse. It's not necessarily well-bred. None of you are into, like, that mountain horse breed enough to really tell, but she's got a very finely crafted saddle. It's not, like, fancy tooled leather. It's just good. You guys recognize quality. Um, uh, and she's sitting on a, a very well-cared-for horse uh, with well-worn leathers that are, again, of just good quality. Uh, and that's, like, that's leather armor she's wearing. And she's not sitting side saddle like the other ladies. Um, and she's got short-cropped, pitch-black hair uh, and deep blue eyes. Uh, that are in little half moons as she's laughing uproariously. Um, and then she goes, Ah, oh, but it's true. Uh, you know, ceremonies and traditions and good luck when you ride are important. And she kind of snorts disdainfully down the road of the course. He goes, Even if this will be easier than my normal ride, if you've got something lucky, you bring something lucky. And then she kind of pats her horse uh, affectionately. So it's kind of an, an odd little assortment of uh, a high-born uh, lady of the Vale, a high-born reach lady that plans to go riding, um, Brendan Tully the Blackfish, 
His horse is also pointing away. He's just there being companionable with people not planning to ride. Uh, and someone who looks like a lowborn, uh, but who's definitely included in this circle of, of highborn folk. Uh, the only other rider of note, and this is because some of you have, uh, I mean, you've all got pretty high awareness, but some of you have appropriate specialties uh, dealing with, like, knights and, and houses and that sort of thing. Uh, and some of you have a long Dornish tradition of keeping an eye on your military rivals in the Stormlands. Uh, there's a young retainer to House Charon of the Stormlands, um, and you recognize him as somebody that people were talking about, like, why haven't they gone ahead and made him a squire? But he seems content to just be a lowborn retainer of House Charon. Uh, his name is Garrett Ryder. It's not uncommon for small folk to take a profession as their name. Uh, and he is on a very fine roundsy. Uh, and again, with a very fine saddle and yada, yada, yada. Um, and you've heard people gossiping around the tourney um, that, uh, you know, like he should be made somebody squire or man-at-arms at this point, but he seems content to just ride. Uh, so those are the NPCs of note that you see. There's a scattering of kind of no-name squires and uh, maybe three or four other kind of low-born riders um, that don't really merit notice. You don't recognize them, at least. But there's not a ton of people registered for the horsemanship contest and perhaps because it's at dawn uh there's not a ton of people here to watch it but that could also be why it's scheduled at dawn uh because it's not necessarily got the same draw that said uh before we kick things off with any dice or give you guys a chance to role play down here at the blackwater beaches of blackwater bay at dawn uh we just had the iron throne seized so thank you very much for that cool tick one. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but it also may not be a word meant to be pronounced. So I could have just accidentally summoned a great old one. Ooh. Sorry, everybody. Uh, but, I uh, 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 yeah, so uh, <laughs> thanks for joining. Uh, cool tick, when you get the chance there in chat, uh, just let us know what player character or non-player character you want to give a destiny point to. It can be anybody. The players want it to be them, especially the players that are planning to ride this morning, I would wager, uh, mm -hmm. might be interested. So let's jump to the players that are planning to ride this morning. Oh, my destiny we know points are there. Just say it. Yeah, yeah, just check it. Turns out no God, destiny points. I just points. bitched it, whatever. Um, so, uh, last I checked, I believe we had uh, the Lady Reyna prepared to ride this morning, uh, and Sir Bannon Rivers was planning to take part. Uh, are the rest of you here for moral support? Or yes. what's what's our plan? I'm Spectating. here so I don't get told on for not being here. <laughs> With a wine uh, glass in my hand, I'm like, to find a place to get why, why something you to want. All right. Yes. All right, uh, I have my sense. Oh. You didn't register to ride earlier. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, <laughs> fine. Then I will be here for moral support. Well, Kayla, you, you might be able to join one of these events that's like a one and done, uh, which this is the last of. You might be able to sign up late, but. That would require convincing the guy overseeing it Come to on. let Come on, he just signed up. And that would be talking to Stannis Baratheon and asking him to bend the oh, rules. Geez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, by accident, <laughs> that wasn't necessarily by design on my part, but... Uh, uh -huh. Of course not. Supposed uh -huh. to believe uh -huh. that. Might be a harder <laughs> sell <laughs> than normal. Bela, I'm half but... drunk. Do I get a try? <laughs> <laughs> You're half drunk? Oh, did you, like, you just wake up? <laughs> Still drunk from last night? It's how you avoid hangovers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Terrible by the seven, I, I come up with a clever by way to avoid a hangover. This is the, should I? No. No, I appreciate your help. You, <laughs> you're a valued member of this family. <laughs> and, and I'm so glad to have you here with us. <laughs> well, 
you gotta go fight the status by yourself, I guess. My stat isn't nearly high enough to even get near him. And, and Luke, <laughs> you have seen Stannis around King's Landing, um, because you were squire to the, uh, Man at Arms, or the Master at Arms, right. the Chief. Um, Stannis does occasionally still train and practice, um, and sometimes as a squire, uh, you were sent to, to run messages or, you know, whatever, so you don't know that he knows who you are, but he, he may very well might. Um, you know, like I said, he's never been super friendly with you or anything. Uh, but I used to any of us, he doesn't yeah, like to meet that, me. But that could mean you're like his third best friend. Like, you don't know, it's it's hard to tell with Stannis. Uh, you know, he could really, really appreciate the way you've never tried to be friendly with him. Ah! If Ron Swanson as commander, he might appreciate that there's been a lack of small talk. Yeah, that's the business kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I, I would give it a try. Uh, Bela, if you'd like to. Yeah. Alright, let's uh, kind of straighten up. Make sure that the wrinkles my. <laughs> Alright, let's go approach you get... him. You're wearing a shirt for this? I think yeah, I wore a shirt. I bought a shirt just for this. <laughs> uh, pants! I don't know, but shirt, yeah. <laughs> no one said it was. <sighs> Uh, so as you approach, and he's standing there, uh, um, nice arm... yeah, yeah, you, you, you bought good stuff. It's probably his shirt. Uh, Stannis is standing there with his arms crossed, kind of facing the crowd of people, uh, and you see his, his flinty eyes, uh, come over to the two of you as you're clearly separating from the pack and approaching him, uh, and he flicks them up and down, both of you. Uh, it's kind of nice, I guess, for uh, a dude in King's Landing to not, like, less giviously look you up and down, Vela. Like, that's a, a nice change of pace <laughs> from, you know, somebody openly eyeballing the Dornish woman. Uh, but My chop the, liver? The same kind of flick up and down look uh, that he gives your brother, so that's kind of cool in a, you know, fuck the patriarchy sort of way. Um, and then in the heartbeat before either of you wants to speak, like he times it just right as you're like opening your mouth for some words to come out your face hole, he cuts you off uh, because he has a high enough status that he'll just win the initiative roll. And he goes, huh, Sir Aaron Squire, as I recall, and this must be one of your sisters. What is it you need? It is indeed. Uh, this is... Uh terribly against procedure, but my sister intended to sign up for the event and did not. It's pretty much she can sign up late. I know this is an inconvenience to you and not the way it normally goes, but nonetheless, she would like it, and I'm honor-bound as a member of the family to help her. Nymerian. Yes, I heard from Lord Florent that there was some disturbance as your bastard was sent to enroll some of you in these events. It may have been the issue. I do honestly know. But but yes, he got into a scuffle. There's been a lot of that going around. This scuffle. I have a great deal on my mind, and I don't recall who with. What is it that happened? Yeah, the, um... Squire of ours, the, the bastard, he got into, um... A fight with some others, I believe. Bailey, do you recall the details? Yeah, it seems the Frey children caused some trouble. Started pushing them around. He ended the fight. I recall a table being broken. Yes, well. Indeed. I recall we had to buy a new table, yes. Fine. I suppose the squabbling of squires shouldn't help a, or shouldn't keep a highborn lady from riding in the dawn chill if she wishes to. Uh, go join the others. Uh, Grand Maester Pycelle, get her name. And then he just kind of, again, it's weird because he's standing almost like a statue. You don't actually see him turn away from you in any way that human eyes can perceive. But in the depths of your soul, 
You can tell he is no longer paying attention. <laughs> He's no longer here. Damn. <laughs> I give him a polite still... bow. Thank you, mm -hmm. sir. I do the same. Uh, the Grand Maester glances up uh, from uh, doodling in the in the margins of of this book uh, that he's currently uh, sitting on. Eh, what's what's all this? Hmm. It's a whole different flavor of squint. <laughs> I believe we're adding my name to the list of writers this morning. Do you believe it, or do you know it? I know As it. As the Maester of King's Landing, it falls on me to write about facts rather than to scribble the beliefs of every <laughs> Dornish woman who stumbles my way. I believe it and is this only is a why you don't drink from... Is. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, this is why you don't drink from the wrong grail. <laughs> Sorry, please continue. Um, it is by understanding only a fool asserts with 100% positiveness uh, what they know. That said, Stannis Baratheon and asked her to do this. Yes, Indeed. very well. I suppose all, all quite irregular, but, but then I suppose it is King Robert's other brother that is the master of laws. <laughs> this. <clears throat> Irregularities. Yes, very well. What is your name, girl? I'm Bela Nymerian. So droll. Quite right. Very well. You've been added to the rolls. Go and make ready with the other highborn lasses seeking a beachside ride this morning. <laughs> I'll just leave. <laughs> No, no, sister. <laughs> She's like, I'm not even. No. Yes. <laughs> I don't need to deal with this. <laughs> it's done. So, uh, you're you're in the books. Uh, Bela. Yes. Uh, highly irregular, but uh, will you wait to see if there's any kids or wine out here tonight? There's if there's any dog, kids or wine. Did you ask about kids or wine? Or tits? Oh, no. Was that it? No, it was tits. Oh. Uh, I mean, I mean, you could look around my, yourself. I guess my old man just, uh, the impression doesn't work out too uh, The point is, <laughs> I'm gonna go late against a tree and go to sleep. You let me know if anything happens. Okay, I'm gonna go right in this race. Uh, I'll let you know if anything happens, though. <laughs> sure. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> thanks. All right. Th thanks for the help. So, uh, that took a couple minutes. Uh, were any of the rest of you on scene doing much of note during that time? I think mm. I would just be... Adam is just observing all of what's going on kind of trying to get the get a sense of who's who to whom um kind of watch out for any kind of um particularly interesting interactions or relationships or kind of power struggles just interested in what's going on and who's important well uh, as you keep an eye out for skullduggery you do see a shifty looking Dornish woman with a potentially poisoned knife in her belt. But that's just I, your sister coming back over. I don't have her. that knife on me carrying it around. By oh, the way. sorry. Sorry. She hid the poison I, knife I, somewhere else. I do have other daggers on me, but it is not the poisoned one. And I don't have any poison for it. So let's be clear on that note. Fine, fine. There was fine. poison in the hilt. There no, there's a vial down. where yeah. there could yeah, be poison vial. placed, but there is right. not. Was... <laughs> no, I'm it sure was... it's candy. It, it was it was not actively poisoned at yes. the moment. I mean, Bayla's had it for a couple days, so I don't know. Uh, I haven't been able to go find anything to put in. Yeah. In fact, I've been trying to find rules for some of the the things, and I can't yeah, find. Actually, uh, Luke 
Lucaris stole it and it's just got some wine in there. So every now and then he just he just pulls this knife out of his belt and like suckles on it. What's up? You know, nothing you know, like a business. Really hit fast and just kind of stab it in my arm. Yeah, just a quick, quick jab. Uh, says, uh, yeah, the the biggest kind of socializing you see of people of status of note uh, for young Adam is the the odd little foursome uh, over there of uh, Mary Crane, Miranda Royce, uh, the Blackfish, Brendan Tully, and some girl. Uh, she looks to be a few years older than you, uh, roughly of an age with the, the rest of you, maybe a year or two older, uh, so 19 or 20-ish, so kind of the older side of the party. Her insides are probably all dried out and worthless, like Reyna's. Uh, oh my god! You know, that sort of ah! pushing the boundary of fertility wow. still. Uh, but wait, what? No, nothing. Just I'm being descriptive, like George R. R. Martin. Uh. Um, so, uh, but yeah, she looks maybe 19 or 20-ish. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's those four, um, and they're certainly the highest status ones hanging out, aside from the Master of Ships, Lord Stannis Baratheon of the Baratheons of Dragonstone. Uh, so yeah, other than that, you're not really seeing many people of, like, note uh, hanging out. I just am lining up with the others and gauging what I can of their skill based on how they sit their horses and and planning to leave them all in the dust, hopefully. I have a courser. Uh, so that leaves, uh, Sir Vannon Rivers. Uh, anything in particular that you are up to? There's a legendary warrior of the Riverlands right there. I'm just saying. Right oh, like, I, I really want to talk to a living legend, but on the other hand, I am just some upstart bastard, so... Like, I've got... Status 3 Tournaments 1. Do I think that would be, a uh, a permissible thing. How did the bastard son of a bracken and a blackwood <laughs> come to Blackwater Bay looking to ride good? Ba -ba -ba -do -do -do. Anyways, um, I mean, you could like just go introduce yourself. Like, I'm not saying you should. Uh, I'm just pointing out you've been on the lookout for notable Riverlanders for most of the trip, uh, and I just thought I'd mention that that he was there because uh, you've often been. Looking for Blackwoods and Brackwoods for personal reasons, but also for any other Riverlanders. Um, and he is also kind of busy right now, um, but he could be around. So you don't have to go talk to him now. You could, you know, it's your call. I just thought I'd mention it. I've got my eyes open for anybody of note, but especially anybody who may be taking note of me. There's got to be an opening there. Aside from that, Beat for Could. beat, what Felicia uh, said, including the type of horse. Yeah, give me an awareness empathy roll, Kevin. All right, uh, 14. Uh, that beats difficulty 12, which is one of their default kind of difficulty uh, tiers. Uh, you actually notice uh, Sir Brendan Tully, the Blackfish, uh, is casting the occasional glance at you out of the corner of his eye, Sir oh, Vanen. No. I'll go over and introduce myself politely. Oh, no. It wasn't like, <laughs> oh, yeah. he's not like hostile looking. He's not knocking an arrow and testing the wind or anything like that. It just, you notice that he was, you know, glancing your way and not necessarily glancing at your sisters, or you know, it was, or not sisters, sorry, your, you know, hosts, I guess. Uh, Don't make it creepy, pointed, Rusty. He's pointedly <laughs> looking at you. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can, you can walk your horse over. Um, the group of them is politely chuckling at another witticism of young Meredith Crane. She seems to be full of, of good cheer and uh, and quips 
Uh, and you notice that, uh, you recall, just from general background radiation of knowing stuff about highborn people, that Meredith's nickname is Mary. So it seems to maybe not just be because it's her name. Uh, kind of every time anybody has glanced over at this group, they've been kind of laughing and she's been looking pleased about it. Uh, so they're just chuckling good-naturedly uh, at another something clever she said. Uh, and you walk up on your horse and say a thing. I'll wait till an organic opening or one of them notices me. I'm playing it definitely cool. Okay, uh, the the good-natured chuckling dies off, and Brendan Tully quirks one gray eyebrow at you pointedly, noting that you have arrived. I give a nod. Lord Blackwood. Oh, not blah, blah, Lord Blackwood. What the? This is the cold. Daddy, <laughs> is that Sorry. you? That's <laughs> oh, God. Super, super cool opening. Different character. <gasps> uh, so I was thinking of the blackfish. Uh, yeah. It's all good. Lord Tully. Um, quick note, he would be Sir Tully. His father Sir. is Lord Tully. That would be a another misstep. It's cool. I know you're high on NyQuil right now. Do, do what Thank you gotta you. do. It's fun. But, yeah. Sudafed for days. <laughs> if something happens over there, I can't hear it. All right. Uh, yes. Sir Tully. He, he uh, nods and doesn't speak. Just lets you continue your sentence. Uh, the lot of them have kind of turned and are looking your way with pleasant half smiles on their faces. Boy, am I out of my depth. Uh, it's an honor to see you, sir. Will you be riding today? Uh, I'm afraid not. Uh, and he leans down and, and pats his horse, uh, which is a jet black um, uh, courser. You're sure that the, the hue is not a coincidence. Uh, but he, he leans down and pats his horse. He goes, no, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, Ebony may still be a bit spent from our our late ride down from the Vale, uh, though some of us aren't letting the long trip stop us, eh, Maya? Uh, and he kind of gestures towards the other girl, uh, the one with the black hair and the not highborn name, etc. Uh, he goes, uh, we, we got here late, but I heard you'd already made a, a bit of a splash uh, in the list, uh, you are uh, Sir Vannon Rivers, are you not? The same. Knocked the belly on his back, and it took him a few minutes to stand up again, I heard. Like a turtle. Well, as the uh, orphans and true-born peasants of the city uh, want to remind me, he was the least of them, and I am but a bastard. He's the least of a great many people, not only the king's guard. I'm sorry I missed it, but uh, we had some washed out roads. Luckily, uh, Maya here got us here safely, uh, unlike that poor Corbray lad. Uh, but, uh, speaking of bastards, he gives her a bit of a wry smile that would otherwise, you know, it would be a pretty big fucking insult to, to pointedly go, speaking of bastards, uh, but it looks like they know each other and get along well enough. So he gives her a wry smile. And he goes, uh, Maya Stone, she's the only reason we made it here in time. She was determined not to miss the riding contest and saw to it that we managed to not kill any horses, but only just on the way. Are you fresh for the race then, lady? She shrugs and gives out a very kind of indelicate snort. Uh, I don't know about fresh, but I'm ready enough. Though, uh, I may not be able to compete against the fine palfrey of Lady Meredith here, especially if her hawk swoops down at any of us, uh, and the royal ladies kind of titter again. And then the blackfish, uh, kind of, ah, uh, I forgot my manners. I'm not sure if you lot have met, uh, Miranda Royce of the Gates of the Moon, uh, and Meredith Crane of House Crane. Uh, the girls titter and smile at you uh, quite politely. Uh, Mary Crane has pretty adorable dimples. 
uh, Miranda, Roy says, pretty adorable curves. <laughs> Who doesn't like an adorable curve? <clears throat> or an adorable dimple. All the adorable. Right there in front of you, looking at you. <laughs> King's Landing. <laughs> so, uh, my eyes have turned actually to the falcon. Uh, she does not actually have her falcon. They were just oh, continuing one of their jokes because she's we she is wearing like her falconer's like glove uh, and stuff. Um, but yeah, there was it was just them joking about their old joke. I will remark on that. You seem dressed for a hunt, lady. Well, I am chasing a prize, but as I told my execrable friend Miranda, I don't actually have a falcon hidden anywhere along the way. It's just my lucky riding glove. Well, mayhap we'll have the good fortune to hunt together one day. It's one of my great pleasures. Well, I think you're unlikely to make it to High Garden to join Marjorie and I anytime soon, but uh, perhaps if there's a, a hunt organized later this week, uh, we could see what happens. It would be a pleasure. Out of character, that's a perfectly like reasonable answer for uh, a highborn lady to give a bastard. Like that's that's not a hard no, um, and you're not going to get a hard yes. So that's, you know, just that's to, mom to saying I'll it, think about it. It was it was actually a pretty fair answer. Um, you know, uh, it would be quite scandalous for her to say anything more positive than that. So it was a pretty you know pretty good answer. Uh, all right then. So I will. I feel like I've probably exhausted my hospitality with this, and I don't want to overstretch it. So I will nod to ladies, turn to uh, Sir Tully. Well, it has been a genuine pleasure meeting all of you, and especially you, sir. I've heard much of your exploits. Grew up on the legends. Uh, he does the kind of gruff old guy, oh poo, sort of, sort of gesture, just like, ah, uh, you know, he's heard it all before, um, but he's not, like, rude about it, he just kind of waves it off. Best of luck to all of you. Uh, okay. as you, as you turn and ride away, uh, you hear not ill-natured girlish giggles and a few appraising ooh type of <laughs> intergroup teasing of one another. Um, so, yeah, like no one's throwing anything at you or anything. So, yeah, it seems to go very well. I, I imagine at this point, I see that like Bela is rejoining on her horse, and I'm just like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Save me! <laughs> That seemed to go well. <laughs> are you are you there to talk to me or? Sure. Was that, a, was that was that Felicia or Reyna? It was Reyna. Yes. I, well, I suppose there's something to all this tiny business. I think people like winners. <laughs> Well, I can only hold my own for so much longer. These next few jousts are sure to unseat me. I guess we'll find out. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I... of course. Hey, don't be humble yet. Wait until you actually lose at something. <laughs> Hunting vulture kings and bandits makes me conservative, my lady. So, uh, any other role play of note before we want to kick this mama jama off? Ride! Let's go. Alrighty. Um, Oris, for his part, is still back at the pavilion prepping everybody's armor for the day. That's why, uh, I was going to say he's been uncharacteristically quiet, but he hasn't been. Oris is often pretty quiet in this session. But, anyways, uh, he is not there and active. So the way we're going to handle this ride um, is a series of contests 
Uh, we're going to start with this open dash, uh, with this kind of scenic uh, romance novel. Everybody chasing, you know, everybody racing horses on the edges of the beach at dawn, sort of thing. That's going to be just like an open initial dash to jockey for position. Then uh, the course is going to curve you through the trees, um, where it's fairly, you know, old growth forest. Uh, and you're gonna have to kind of weave through the trees. There's ribbons up to show what is the course, uh, and it's a congested enough part that your horse's quickness attribute is going to come into play as you try to weave through them. Uh, and then there's a switchback uh, for the kind of going uphill part, which is at some of the rocky, craggy, uh, hilly bits, the, the rougher bits of the bay. Uh, where you can't actually like land ships and stuff. If you just remember some of the geography that we've seen on the show. Um, and this part uh, is a series of switchbacks um, that you either have to navigate the switchbacks or you can try to go up like a mountain goat for a shorter ride, uh, but also a tougher ride. So you can choose to use either your quickness for your horse or the balance attribute of your horse depending on which way you go. And if anyone has favored terrain, hills or mountains, or favored terrain, forests, it will help with those sections, with the trees and the rocks. Uh, and then will come a long curving ride to get back towards the pavilion ground, where your horse's stamina attribute will come into play. And then finally, the closing dash, which is in slow motion, which will, like the opening run, use your horse's run. Uh, so what we're gonna do is a series of animal handling rolls. So you're gonna be rolling your animal handling core ability. You're going to get bonus dice for your ride specialty, if you have it, and bonus dice based upon um, your horse's attribute. So for this first part, you'll also get bonus dice for your horse's run score. So this is where some of the different breeds of horse are going to come into play. Uh, nobody's out here on a destrier, right? This isn't what they're for, uh, but uh, all that sort of thing. Um, also, uh, for Lady Bela, is anybody else on a sand steed? I think everyone else, the other two of you are on coursers, correct? Uh, and Bela, I think you said you were riding your sand steed today, right? I am, indeed. Okay. You're going to get a flat plus one to all these rolls, because sand steeds just have a little bit higher movement rate than other horses. Nice. Uh, and instead of turning it all into math, where we're multiplying everybody's result by movement rate or something, <laughs> we're just going to give it like a plus one in all the rolls um, for just the quickness of a sand steed. So is that making sense to everybody? You're going to be rolling animal handling plus ride plus a horse's attribute. You're going to be keeping only animal handling. And keeping then only, okay. whoever is in the lead, um, if anybody has won any more of these early ones than anyone else, if anyone else is a clear leader going into the closing dash, they will get to actually keep one extra die for the last dash of everybody racing to the finish line. So I'm trying to go kind of cinematic with it while also leaning on different horse attributes. So is that all making sense to everybody? I, yeah, yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's kick it off with the opening run of the sun rising over the narrow sea uh, and everybody running in a, a uh, you know, leaving a trail of sand and sea spray behind them uh, as as you go tearing off uh, across the low sands of Blackwater Bay. Uh, so, and, and oh, by the way, the start of the race is not at all fun or exciting. Uh, Stannis just kind of growls, Riders, make ready. Go! <laughs> like, he's, he's that, like, flat and like command voice about it and like, like there's no like fanfare of trumpets 
He doesn't even like gesture. He's not wearing like booty shorts like Fast and Furious. You don't get <laughs> Stannis or Grandmaster Pycel showing off their butt as they like drop a hanky. For Stannis, the manis. So like it's I'm a real, <laughs> yeah, it's a real letdown for the Fast and Furious fans out there. Um, well, but I was, I was, I was more thinking of the the very Scottish guy from the UK, Gladiators back in the nineties. Contenders ready. Gladiators yeah. ready. Uh, it's just it's not even that exciting. It's just Stannis doing the job uh and for a moment it, it really makes you all realize like like this is probably why why he and his highborn lady only have one kid like if this is how he does it just writers make ready <laughs> so, like that would explain why there's just the one princess uh. darling here i come <laughs> you properly liberated <laughs> yes. exactly. almost Almost. There we are. <laughs> so, don't even we open. <laughs> we will open with uh, animal handling plus ride plus any specialty dice that your breed of horse has in run. Uh, again, horse stats are, I believe, on page 221. I think these numbers are the same across the various editions of the PDF. Uh, yeah, what do you got, Adam? Flash Ash. Um, um, should we be like? Should anyone wanting to bet on this put their bets in the? the uh, sheet? yes, wagers in in the document. Uh, by the by, uh, and uh, you can only raise their bet on who's gonna take first. I know it's a horse race, but we're not gonna do like first and place and yada yada. Just Westeros, nobody cares. You gotta win. Uh, so yeah, make sure bets are in on the Google Doc. Uh, yes, Kevin, what do we got? That was bonus dice uh, for run for said yes. horse. So animal handling, mm -hmm. your animal handling, your ride specialty, and then if your breed of horse uh, has the run specialty, um, then you can add that. Uh, it's an athletics specialty. And that's, so, add, so that, that's add, not substitute, like bonus dice. Correct. It is, it is additional bonus dice. So it's not like okay. instead of your ride, it's mm. this breed of horse is extra good at go fast, so you get an, a, a bonus die or two, or, you know, whatever. And, and that's okay. the same with the Sand Sea. Was I, you, were you giving me a plus one die or a plus one bonus to the total? Uh, on yours for the Sand Sea, on all these rolls, you will add one to the total. To the, the final? End. Okay. Yeah, so it's like the, like a, like a Master Crafty type of thing. And, by the way, if any of your horses are castle bred, as we've been calling it, if you bought, if you paid the double for an extra good horse, you do get the additional plus one to your total for this, hmm. because they are pure riding type chips. Yeah. Unfortunately, so, I couldn't uh, afford that during yeah. character generation. Sand yeah, seeds are right. quite good. pricey. <laughs> so, just trying to remind everybody of their totals, uh, and but give me a second, because I've got a roll for everybody with a... So, so like your sand seed has a run of three bonus dice. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna roll like your animal handling of three. And your your ride specialty bonus dice. One. And then your run bonus dice. Three more. But you're keeping only as many dice as is your animal hand. animal hand. Yep. So, roll seven, keep three, and add one to the total. Got it. Perfect. And I couldn't have done any better with this roll. I did shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically it's mediocre, but. <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> uh, I'm glad Definitely I'm not, not shiny. In this race. <laughs> One second, one last NPC to roll for. Okay, uh, there is that for the named NPCs. Did you get my message, Rusty? Uh, yeah, like I said, just, just put it on the, the Google Docs uh, and we're good. Uh, 
Oh, no, that's not what it was, but never mind. The blackfish isn't, uh, isn't riding. I did not. No, it wasn't to do with riding, though. Okay, the destiny point going to the blackfish. Okay, got it. Yes, I got that one now. Sorry. Um, all right, so I've got NPCs rolled for for the dash. Uh, what is our first total? Uh, let's start with Vanin. I have a s- seventeen. Lady Bela. I have a nineteen. Oh, nice. <laughs> And uh, Lady Reyna. Eleven. <laughs> the important thing is you tried. All Not right. Not the one who's taking part. The uh... <laughs> ah, damn it! There we go. Sorry. Oh. Uh, my my push to talk is alt, and sometimes when I click on a new thing, just weird things happen. So. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do a general pack of nameless writers that is the amorphous pack uh, their average for the turn was a 10 so literally everyone with a name is ahead of the handful of unnamed squires and, and retainers not by much but some of you have at least pulled ahead um, at an 11 uh, is Peeling with laughter, uh, Miranda Royce, daughter of Lord Nestor Royce, on her palfrey, um, and riding side saddle, and just uh, also bouncing and jiggling in a very unladylike fashion that would be very rude for anyone to pay attention to. Uh, but she is <laughs> neck and neck with Reyna, uh, so you're both at 11. Uh, you are much less bouncy with your sleek Nymerian lines. <laughs> Um, but she is just having the fucking time of her life, like, look at me, I'm on a horse, like a commoner, we, you know, like, like, <laughs> but like, she's beating I'm some people. You definitely get the idea she's only here because her dear friend Mary Crane and, and, and Maya Stone talked her into it, uh, or sorry, dear friend Maya Stone and acquaintance Mary Crane, but she's like, whoa, I'm not last, like, this is great, we, <laughs> um, and, and she, yeah, so she's going along fine, uh, Reyna, uh, you are on a courser, correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. So uh, you, you are also at an 11, pulling ahead of, of the the nebulous pack. Uh, fair enough. But just ahead of you uh, is Mary Crane uh, on her very fine palfrey. That horse is, is booking for her. A few lengths ahead of her is Sir Vanen Rivers, who is a horse length behind Lady Bela, behind, uh, who, and they are a length or two behind Maya Stone, who is booking on a shaggy little mountain garen. Um, it, it, she almost maxed out her roll, but then with one pip missing from his die at a 23 is Garrett Ryder uh, on his round seat. He just got the jump on everybody uh, with that lowborn steed eating up the sand. So, first point goes to Garrett Ryder. Shit, Baylor. Um, <laughs> now, the good news, for those of you that are back several or whatever, you're not, like, losing anything compared to everyone else. Uh, this is just going, like, one point to Garrett Ryder that will only help out with the dash at the end. So we're not keeping track of placement as we go from stage to stage. It's kind of a clean slate each time to make up for some unlucky rolls. Next up is weaving through the trees uh, and the small folk. Small folk are kind of lining the path still. Uh, and, and here, you know, it's like when you see rally racers and there's like small folk hanging out, waving them on. Uh, and some of them are like, ah! And you think you hear a few cheers for your name as, as you're going by a few, um, each of you. Um, and it could just be that they're recognizing your colors and, and hollering a hello, you know. Uh, but you hear some, Nymeria! And you go racing by and they're toasting you with their humble wooden cups or saluting with a chicken leg or whatever, you know. So there's some small folk out here in the woods uh, 
uh, as you go weaving your way through the trees. This roll is your animal handling and your ride and your horse's quickness specialty. So again, it's a, an agility specialty. Some horses have it, some horses don't. So additional bonus dice for quickness. And again, give me a minute as I have to roll for a million NPCs. Record Ash, I really love the fan. It's Totoro. Very cute. <laughs> it's imported from Japan. And it's very useful right now because to minimize the noise for the live stream, I have to shut my windows and it's too hot, so leave this. It's July. <laughs> July is a horrible month. But it's, it's also good if something sort of this gate gets said because I can just hide with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir. So gentle. Oh, and the, the scandal. <laughs> Got uh, the vapors. Right. Uh, NPCs are rolled for. Uh, what do we got, Vannon? With the bonus dice, I ended up with 18. The best I can do with three dice. And Bela. I have a 16 this time. And Reyna. 15. Okay. Uh, the pack is falling further behind as the aggregate average of nameless NPCs got a 6. Uh, their dice were not very hot at all this stage. Um, you feel like a few of them might be uh, waving... At, at friendlies that they know or, or that sort of thing. Yeah, thanks for the destiny point, cool. Uh, Reyna, did you see you have a destiny point now? So, oh, I see that. Thank you very seizing, much. Seizing the throne there. Uh, something to keep in mind for later turns of the race, perhaps. Yeah. Um, and then, with both 15s, uh, you are actually still absolutely neck and neck, Reyna, with Miranda Royce. She is leaning forward uh, over her horse a bit. She rolled really well for herself. Uh, and you guys both had 11s, and now you both have 15s. Excellent. Uh, so I think you're going steady now. That's two in a row. Um, uh -huh. she, is, she is neck and neck with you on her palfrey. Um, and then Bela with her 16 is just a bit ahead. Garrett Ryder with his 17 uh, is now a link behind Vanin, but Maya Stone with her 20 uh, plotted this really bizarre looking course through the trees uh, that ends up just getting like a horse length on anybody else. Uh, she's able to just like hug the inside edge of the curve just right um, and like if this was a movie there would have been like a slow-mo cutscene where you saw her like map out the course in like all the straightest most efficient lines uh so maya stone the bastard of the veil uh ends up snagging a 20 on this one uh and getting ahead leaving the trees and on the way to the rocks the wrong time to ambitiously bet on my siblings. <laughs> you learned a valuable lesson about believing in your family. I really am. <laughs> As we make it into the rocks, uh, this is either a series of ramping switchbacks to get kind of off the beach and up to the high ground, or you can try to, to, to mountain goat this bitch. Uh, and just kind of try to go straight up the switchbacks. It is either your horse's quickness for the back and forth turns or your horse's balance 
if you're trying to just go straight up the switchbacks. So it's your call, but note, uh, there may be, uh, like, of all of them, uh, it was the trees and the rocks that may have the, the worst consequences of a very unlucky roll. Uh, these are the two where you've actually got decent odds of hurting a horse. Um, so, uh, just pick the better, <clears throat> excuse me, of balance or quickness to describe the quickness. method uh, that you are using uh, for this next bit. Uh, I'm taking the switchbacks. Um, I remember say. some of you were talking about favored territory, hills or mountains. I honestly don't recall if anybody took it. But no. if you have those, uh, that will be a full bonus temp die wow. on this bit. Um, so, go ahead and make your rolls. Uh, and uh, when you're giving me your totals, just kind of declare which way you went as you describe your arriving. Ready. Okay. One second, one second. All right. Um, I didn't actually declare a difficulty for this, but if I had, the pack would be in some real motherfucking trouble, because they rolled one, 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 <laughs> one. They dropped to drop the bonus die of their one, um, but they don't all explode. Like nobody's like, there's too much horse in this horse, and like they don't, they don't all just fucking fall apart, but. Uh, because of the choke point of this kind of the narrow uh, switchbacks, it actually kind of fits in the fluff uh, that the pack is having some real fucking problems <laughs> with this one. Uh, they are they are garbage uh, this this round. So much so that I might stop rolling from them for now on. We'll just be like at the end of the race. There might still be a couple of squires back there waiting for their turn to go up the hill. <laughs> like that was that was awful. Uh, so Vanin, what did we end up with? And did you do the switchbacks or the climb? I uh, went with the riskier proposition to try to pull ahead, and I rolled a seventeen. Wow. And Bela. I took the safer approach, and I rolled a sixteen. And Lady Reyna. Push to talk. Push to talk. I also took the switchbacks, and I also rolled an 18. Or, sorry, yeah, 16. 16, all righty. Uh, so, yeah, the, the mass of riders is increasingly a half-forgotten memory uh, with their three. Uh, Meredith Crane... Um, is maybe her palfrey is not used to going all out like this. She just got an 11. Um, so she has actually fallen a hair behind Miranda Royce and Garrett Ryder, who both got 12s. He had to roll really poorly for that 12. Uh, poor Garrett did not do well on this bit. And they're all doing the switchbacks. Um, running away with it uh, this turn uh, are those of you um, that either could corner really well, uh, like uh, doing some, uh, you know, Dornish drift there with sand steeds <laughs> and nimble coursers <laughs> taking the corners. Yeah, kick, kick, kicking up sparks as your hind quarters slide around the corners. Uh, but head and shoulders running away with it uh, is Maya Stone, mm. uh, who actually like leaves the trees 
uh, and just mountain goats it right up the side uh, with a yeah that just sets her horse like bounding from boulder to boulder. Uh, she got a 23. Like it was making the most of her extra kept die. Wow! Also rolling really good. Uh, in her defense, Garens do have two bonus dice for balance. So that was a, uh, a really good time for her to roll very well. That said, you are getting out onto open ground. Uh, you are now like on the stretch of King's Road leading towards the pavilion ground. So it's a big, flat, open stretch that is wide enough for multiple of you to be jockeying for position and just running all out long distance. So for this stretch, called the Long Ride, it's going to be your horse's stamina attribute that comes into play. Stamina. Ooh. Several horses are pretty good at stamina because horses. horses. <laughs> I have more bonus dice than normal dice. That can sometimes happen. Mm. And especially because we're allowing bonus dice from multiple sources. Uh, yeah, so if it's ever going to happen, it's going to happen a time like now. Now, is this All the right. final stretch? Yeah. No. No? Not quite. The final stretch is the second dash, uh, and that's going to be the last sprint towards the finish line when everything goes, like, cool slow motion and, like, the camera's on wheels next to the lead horse and everyone's, like, heaving right next to each other. Uh, da, this is da, the da, next da, to the da, last. Da, yeah. I'm yeah. literally thinking of Charlie Moore and the sun and mm -hmm. the ocean. Exactly. Uh, so... Uh, this is the long run, or the long ride. Uh, Vannon, what was your total? With all those bonus dice, I had my pick of the litter and 18. I'm never going to do better than 18 without Destiny. I, destiny is an option. That's why I'm asking every time. You turn. just got a Destiny yeah. point. Yeah, I, you did. I just did? Get one. Yeah, 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 you he did. gave the last one to you. Oh. Now, I'm gonna, ooh, thank you. you. I'm going to save that for the straightaway might, at the end. Yeah, you guys shot. might want yeah. to the, the last one. <laughs> Uh, Bela. I also had an 18. Reyna. 17. Okay, and I didn't even roll for the pack anymore. I like the idea of, like, the lowest status guy just, like, still being stuck in a queue down at the beach. Uh, so I didn't Damn roll it, the no! <laughs> they are out of it. Uh, Meredith Crane and her... <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Meredith Crane and her palfrey uh, are kind of bringing up the rear neck and neck with Garrett Ryder, who both managed to roll 14s this time. Garrett Ryder was not happy uh, with his dice these last few rounds. Uh, and then Miranda Royce and her good friend Maya Stone are neck and neck at 16. Uh, Miranda uh, is no longer like peeling with laughter. She's like taking it seriously and stuff. Uh, and you can hear Maya go like, come on, girls. Come on, girls. We got this. Uh, and it seems to be talking to her horse and her friend uh, as they are trucking along at 16. I like them. <laughs> Reyna is just a hair ahead of them at 18. Uh, and then Vannon and Bela are tied for the lead with 18s. I'm throwing a look over at her, just a giant smile. <laughs> <laughs> we got Aww. this. Uh, and so, going into the last stretch, a bonus kept die will go to Maya Stone, the Bastard of the Veil, because she came in first twice. 
Mm. Both the times that her nimbly pimbly little horse uh, was able to get her a, a lead. Ooh, but it's going to be rough. This one goes back to the running specialty, which her Garon certainly has not got. So it's kind of anybody to take. Because uh, in that first dash, you know, Garrett Ryder uh, did pretty well with those running dice from his round seat. And I know several of you have pretty run oriented horses. So. Yep. Let's sling that last handful of dice, animal handling, ride, running, and don't forget to make that call on destiny points that some of you just got. So it's oh no! Race. Just tell me oh, when no. it's the last uh, part. That's when I'll this use this. Yeah, this, this is, is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. This is the <laughs> using destiny then. Well, Can we roll all of these? <laughs> keep in mind, you don't have to declare destiny before a roll. Uh, you can declare destiny after you roll. If it's bad dice, you can, you know, it might not be worth it to keep an extra die if they're all bad. Another thing you can do with destiny is roll a bonus die. So, for instance, with Erica's dice all being crappy, you can roll another die, and if it comes up like a six, you make that a die that you keep. It, that, it wouldn't I matter. I, so, I can't go I can... from average to win the race. I, um, you can use a destiny point to keep a bonus die, like, for your final total, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I am doing that. <laughs> Using my gifted destiny point. Apparently I'm going to save mine for the just. Doubt Bela had five dragons right now. It's probably smart. Sorry. <laughs> I I was I'm right in position. Oh, decent okay. die rolls up until this one, and it's like here's all the fours. And you're like, well, I mean that's That's how my first roll was. It was like four, four, three. We should have just tripped my stone. I uh I rolled a I rolled a sixteen on five D ten last night. It was for, awful. Uh, oh, for, gosh. for brand new Brand new hit point roll, and that was with re rolling ones. Oh, we were allowed no. to re roll ones. And he got, got another two. Hit. Yeah, it was it was it was bad. Oof. So yeah, it's it's dice are, dice are fickle creatures. Yes. Um, so Let's get the bad roll out of the way now roll. though. <laughs> yeah. Uh so Van In, what are we looking at? I'd like to spend that destiny point to keep one of my bonus dice. Okay. Bringing me to four sixes. Very nice. All right, I'm in, Bela. baby. Bela, what was your mediocrity? <laughs> uh, it's 13. Reyna, what are we looking at? I'll just subtract that gold dragon now. <laughs> I'm not going to spend my destiny point because I can't beat 24. <laughs> All right, what's your total, though? Are you beating uh, your sister? Then it would be a 15. Yeah. She is beating you. Oh, no. All right, then. Um, moving into this last stretch as the path kind of tightens again. Uh, and this is through the tourney grounds. Like, there's still road that goes through the, the pavilion area. Uh, but you guys are totally crowded with, um, you know, vendors and stuff on both sides. Small folk are cheering you on. Knights and lords and stuff. Uh, and squires doing their work. You think in the distance you see Oris waving a barrel full of sand and armor overhead. Uh, <laughs> so it's you're right through the middle of the, the tourney ground and everybody is, is, is roaring you on uh, and the lot of you. Uh, but Bela's sand steed seems to just be getting a, a little bit crowded. Um, and it's a war trained steed, but it is still smaller than any of the other horses here. So you're just kind of getting muscled out of the lead. Can, a little bit. Can I perhaps um, subtly use my skill to maybe obstruct someone else getting in the in the way? Maybe uh, to help out Vannon since since he's like really taking off. Can I just like maybe? We, if that's <laughs> if that's what you want to tell yourself you did to make up for your thirteen, then that's fine. Um, I will say. Don't spend a destiny point, though, because he does not need it. Um, so I don't... 
in the interest of helping out the party conserve resources. You don't get um, the already <laughs> that, That's what I'm going to tell myself. <laughs> it was crowded, um, and therefore it, I, I helped create more crowd and slow down the others. It makes better narrative. <laughs> so you are still taking fifth place overall in the ride, which is not awful. Hmm. Coming up in fourth place with a 14, uh, kind of tied for fourth, I guess, uh, is Miranda Royce and Meredith Crane, both with even 14s, uh, just a hair ahead of the Lady Bela of Wyvern's Rest. Um, and you can see that, that Royce's palfrey is getting a little winded from just hard riding. Uh, and you think maybe Mary pulled up just a hair to stay next to her friend uh, and they're both just giggling and laughing and like they're highborn ladies competing at a tournament like this is really neat to them and really kind of scandalous uh, so they are coming up next with 14s uh, and then tied at 15s uh, is Garrett Ryder retainer to House Karen of Strong Song or Night Song excuse me and the Lady Reyna of Wyvern's Rest uh, Garrett oh, yeah. Ryder totally, he just, it looks like he kind of just blew his, his round C's wind uh, early on uh, with like 20 pluses early and now he's had mid-teens ever since then with some not great rolls. Just ahead of everyone by, uh, yeah, about two horse lengths ahead of that, let's say, is Maya Stone on her shaggy little Garon, but half a length ahead of her with a 24 over her 22 comes Sir Vannon Rivers, who has won the riding contest. Uh, <laughs> Did not expect this. Oh I'm happy for you, but I am a little poor right now. Uh, and that was uh, thanks to the destiny manipulation of a uh, loyal and a generous fan. Because without that destiny point, yeah. my stone would have had it. Uh, she, she was rolling pretty hot all game for the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the numbers that she had. Um, so, uh, bastards take first and second place. Not that second place gets you anything, but uh, Maya does get a cheerful whoop uh, from Sir Brendan Tully, the Blackfish, um, but just ahead of her surges in Van and Rivers, uh, the Bastard of Wyvern's Rest. All up. Yay! I call that a success <gasps> and a bracing way to start the day. <laughs> yeah, that was exciting. It was exciting. Uh, we are cleaning up the first places <laughs> in the independence. This, this is starting uh, to make uh, me you guys have... wonder about the quality of other people in Westeros. You guys have had some really <laughs> hot dice at really key moments. Um, and partially, and this is not to detract from what your house has done, uh, but remember, a lot of the big names just don't compete in some of this. Oh, uh, yeah. right? In some of these, it's like, you know, uh, the Knight of Flowers does not compete in horsemanship contests, right? He has <laughs> little to gain from it, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But you guys do have, you know, as a party, your average animal handling ride is on par with Knight and Knight of Quality. Like, you guys are where you should be as, you know, war-trained highborn in a society that glorifies horsemanship um, your your average is right there, uh, and you got hot dice when you needed the hot dice. So uh, <laughs> until I didn't, I only had destiny <laughs> points to throw around. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Stannis Baratheon is uh, the statue at the finish line. Uh, he is sitting <laughs> and brooding now uh, instead of standing and brooding. Uh, but he doesn't like. Yay! Oh, somebody else is happy. Let's be excited for the benefit of the small folk because I worry about them loving me. Like, no, that's that's mm -hmm. another Baratheon. So Stanith just sits there and he kind of 
like he's got his his hands on like the armrest, uh, and he just kind of goes. As as the winners pass, like he gestures to acknowledge that the race is over, and he has discharged his duty as master of ships. The event that started in Blackwater Bay uh, is over for him, and Blackwater Bay can go back to being a lucky place where he's happy and carefree. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That happened. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> Can leave so now. Done. Uh, you actually see <laughs> Grand Maester Pycelle as he, he squints up uh, and he kind of, eh, what the hell am I? And Stannis just goes, rah, 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 rah. Grand Maester Pycelle actually tisks aloud. It, <laughs> like, a, like a baby boomer <laughs> leaving a tip for a Mexican waitress. Right? It's like Ooh. that. It's that. <laughs> wow. Cool. It's, it's not even too that soon. Look. That's too now. Damn. <laughs> it's too real. Uh, but he's got that sour, pinched, like, no, that's that's not one of my noble patrons at all. Look on his face as he officially scribbles down. Um, they are not there with your reward at, like, the finish line. <laughs> but just a refresher for the winner of the horsemanship contest. Uh, you are getting a golden sandy hued castle bred sand steed from, uh -huh. the stables, from the stables of House Dane of Starfall and 35 gold dragons <laughs> in its saddlebags. So uh, at the end of the tourney, assuming all goes well and you guys don't fall out of favor with House Baratheon or anything, uh, that's that's a thing. So, uh, you guys, it's a pretty right? solid reward there. So, yes, some. <laughs> so that was a weighty destiny point that was spent. So, chat has definitely been helping out House Nymerian some today, uh, which is good because the royal boon from last episode isn't. So, you know, it's just some, <gasps> some parity to the. Oh, whoops. Did I let a secret slip? Uh, Ash. So, uh, good stuff there. Uh, and it does look like the throne just got seized again. So we have a fresh destiny point coming hot off the grill. Uh, so uh, let's make sure that that gets uh, given out. We're going to go ahead and take our mid-session bathroom break right now and let our latest champion of the Iron Throne decide what PC or NPC gets a destiny point while you jam to our rockin' music and look at our cool uh, on-break screen. But when we come back in a couple of minutes, it's gonna be joustin' time. <laughs> so we're gonna bring the violence back to Westeros. Westside, let's do this. <laughs> All right.
Hey, welcome back, everybody. Sometimes we just gotta take a minute and and gather up these destiny points that y'all throwing at us, falling like manna from heaven. Uh, so we need to go FK for a little bit. Uh, Robert had a little bit of a family issue. He's gonna be FK for a few more minutes. Uh, some dogs got out, and we're like, get the hell out of Discord and go take care of your doggos uh, and of yourself because it's hot. Um, so, we're gonna work around that if we need to. Everybody's okay, so uh, don't be too worried about it. Uh, you can toss in pity destiny points if you want to. <laughs> he, did, he did leave a note that those would be appreciated. Um, but, he's fine, he'll be, be uh, back from AFK uh, in a little bit. Uh, with that said, we are gonna jump right in to the next bit of jousting. Uh, instead of, of milling around um, post race, uh, unless there's any role playing you guys really wanted to do at the end of the race, uh, it is up to the players. But no NPCs are going to be just rolling up and picking fights or nothing. So, as far as I am concerned, uh, we can move on to the next scene. But it's not all up to me, it's also up to chat and also the players. So, uh, aside from I'm assuming some pleasantry, congratulation type of yeah. stuff uh, going on post race. Uh, is there anything super planned that y'all have uh, wanting to do post race here and and prior to the next round of uh, Westerosi ritualized combat? Uh, if there's no like ritual award huzzah anything like that i will approach bela yeah there there isn't because this is very much the first thing of the day and because stannis is in charge of it uh he's like no fun, fun <laughs> mandatory not no bonus fun you know so like it's just not <laughs> it's not as cheerful as it should be there still weren't enough like actual humble small folk in it for all the small folk to be riled up like they were with the archery contest. And again, mostly it's because it's really early. Uh, the tournament is actually like literally scheduled around Robert Baratheon's interest level. Uh, and, and this one is early enough that just a lot of people aren't here. So the normal merriment and stuff isn't there. Uh, it's not for once a snub on the bastard for winning. It's just, yeah, it's the horse race How and it's <laughs> barely sun up. Um, so, uh, yeah, you are free. There's no like big ceremonial thing to worry about. You can go role play with whatever character you want to role play. I approach Bela. So sweating from the race, still exhilarated with victory. Approach and still going for breath. I'm sorry, my lady. Sorry? That was exhilarating. C congrats. Ooh, that was a hell of a race. It was entirely luck, and you're, you're by far the better rider. Oh, maybe so, but in that moment, you certainly won this race. Have you, um. So have you noticed. Oh, I just dropped my <laughs> have have you noticed that uh Maya Stone is uh looks rather familiar? Uh I I take a glance over. Hmm well she she is rather large larger, like well built. Not like uh, well maybe more like the those larger lads, wouldn't you say, like, the Kettleblacks or Oris? Now that you mention it, hmm, interesting. That's where you're going with this, right? Uh, the thought had crossed my mind. Blood of the first men may run strong, run a hand absently through my own hair, but still, <laughs> the little things we're learning. Do you I mean, pun people do sometimes look the same. Certainly. Just something Who, to bear in mind. Can, can I, uh, I ro roll a uh, status breeding to see uh, what I know about Maya's 
lineage? Um, no. No. For okay. once, it's, it's actually just going to be a no, because <laughs> uh, you guys aren't really up on the Vale gossip. Um, it's it's far enough away. Uh, like I said, they're they're like four kind of realms away from Dorn down there, and none of you have strong ties to the Vale. Um, if it was Riverlands, or maybe even parts of the North, or if it was pure King's Landing gossip, then maybe because you've all got people around it, you know what I mean. Um, but the house hasn't really got much of a reason to. Uh, to know about bastard scandals of the Vale of Heron. Um, so okay. for once, it's just going to be a, you know, instead of wasting uh, your time with dice and making you waste like an 18 or something, I'm just <laughs> going to go like, like probably not. Now, well, if you want yeah. to, uh, you guys can put some feelers out and ask around mm. in some kind of off-screen, mm. uh, you know, hitting the bricks and and trying to, to learn stuff roll. Um you know, okay. or you could just, you know, if you wanted, you could just go up to Maya Stone and like try to make a roll and be like, "Who's your daddy?" You know, uh, <laughs> that's normally rude among bastards. It's not a great idea, um, but like there are ways you can find it out. Oh, so do I? Do say, I like, know that she's a bastard? Name. Yeah, her last name is Stone. Oh, oh, so, uh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, it uh, completely went over so, my head. It's all good. Yeah, so clarify, uh, I'm just here thinking, oh yeah, Emma Stone, you know. Yeah. Uh, to clarify, a famous bastard, by the way. It's it's <laughs> not a hard no on. You can never learn more about an NPC. It's just okay. that method won't work with that okay. NPC. Well, it's, that tells me a little so bit. That, that was about as much as I was even hoping to to find out. So like that in and of itself <laughs> was is enough. So so back to uh, Vannon. Uh, well. She's also a bastard. That's that's a little coincidental, you might say. Well, there are plenty of us, but still. It's true. But you Something don't you don't look like Oris and you don't look like Maya. But they they look similar. I have the benefit of knowing who my father is, even if he won't acknowledge me. Uh, I'm going to say this is just milling around at the finish line. Uh, so the non-racer, Adam, could also be there. If anybody woke up Lucaris uh, <laughs> and left him for he could still die, be at the beach, you know, depends on how responsible a pet parent Adam was being, uh, then Lucaris could also be there. Uh, but, okay. yes, all the party can be joining by this point. You guys still had a minute or two of private conversation-ish. You know, but if any of the rest of you want to be there and jump in, anybody that did pay attention to Maya Stone or is like looking at her now in a not creepy way, um, you know, like I said, you can notice the kind of comment that I left in Discord chat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well Adam was already watching before the race started. So, yeah, definitely. Um, Speaking of Oris, though, it Oris is back at. Our pavilion tent doing squire things before the yeah, joust. He's, he's prepping everyone's stuff for the joust, okay. including the squire's joust, which is up next. Okay. Uh, the schedule for the day was the horsemanship contest that Robert knows he was going to sleep through, uh, and then the first or the next round of squire's joust, mm -hmm. which Robert also is probably going to sleep through, uh, and then at high sun with the good light. Uh, will be the next round of the grown-up joust, and then in the warmest part of the afternoon, because <laughs> squires will be the next uh, <laughs> two rounds of squires joust today. Uh, so it's riding tournament that Robert doesn't give any fucks about, squires joust that he might want to go watch, uh, you, you know, see how John Aaron's lad does, because isn't he supposed to squire today or joust today? Then grown-up joust, which Robert knows he wants to watch, and then interest wanes again, uh, and it goes back to the squire's joust, uh, and he goes, ah, maybe I'll watch that one, uh, you know. But yeah, so like I said, everything revolves around the whims of Robert Baratheon. Um, so yeah, squire's joust is coming up next. You guys don't have to rush or anything, but that is the next thing. 
So probably the plan is everybody goes back to the pavilion. Those that need to get armored up, armor up, including Oris, uh, and then off to Squire's Joust, everybody's mm -hmm. next round of the jousting, and then the other Squire's Joust. That's the loose plan. All right, well, then let's go back to the tent, and on the way, uh, who is going to Squire for Oris today? Do we I'll have do any it. volunteers? Yeah, yeah. or this one, like, you can... You can vary it from past, or not past to past, but from round to round. So it doesn't right. have to be, you know, uh, I think it was uh, Lucaris that squared for him first. Lucaris did it last. Yeah, yeah. but like, you don't, it doesn't have to be Luke all through the tournament. And even whoever does it in this first round today doesn't have to do it this afternoon. So it's, they don't really care who shows up to help the squires. So it's, yeah, whoever wants to do the thing. I've I'm more than willing to help. help, but if somebody else wants to yeah. take over the I'll, I'll do it. That's fine. Oh. All right then. Yeah. But one at a time, right, sister? <laughs> one Y at the time. One squad of you. What is I don't understand what. Down, and then you do Luke, I don't thing. understand what you're saying. We. <laughs> so, it sounds like the plan I is is Lady Bela in the morning, uh, and then uh, Sir Vannon in the afternoon, uh, ignoring any crude jokes uh, at yeah, anyone's yeah, yeah, expense, yeah, yeah. rather than dwelling on them. Uh, excuse me, people, this is a historical drama. There is no room for <laughs> lewdness. Uh, there is there's no lewdness or overt lewdness sexuality in, in oh. this Game of Thrones. So, sorry, Luke, <laughs> your your whole character just like it's censored it out. Hold on. <laughs> um, so uh, that sounds like that's the plan. Then um, nobody's accosting you all on the way back. If there's no other particular plans for the way back to the pavilion and then heading off to the next round of Squires Joust. Everybody gets helped into armor as needed, yada yada, without incident. Any particular roleplay desires, or do we want to jump ahead to the squire's joust? I think other other than than joining in with the the gossip about Maya Stone, I, th I think I'm good. Okay. I'll join in with that. But, but. <laughs> we're all musing. <laughs> uh, and again, you know. It, it could be, like, Maya Stone bears a passing resemblance to, like, Robar Royce, who you guys chatted with just yesterday. And it could be that the dark hair and craggy features, big boned kind of build, could be blood of the first man being very deep in the Vale of Aaron. Or it could be more specific than that, because the eye it, colors are different. The Royces you've seen have, like, dark eyes. Um, maybe, you know, Orises maybe. are that same dark blue. Maybe Willy Will was a player. <laughs> I'm sorry. So what you're trying to tell us is lack of hair. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. As far as Luke Harris is concerned, this lot spends way too much time obsessing about the parentage of bastards. He's just going to go <laughs> on to the uh, pavilion. Well, fine. So, <laughs> as you make your way through the tourney grounds, uh, and everyone gets armored up, and you're making your way off to the tourney ground proper, uh, where the squires are going to joust. There is an unmistakable bit of good cheer uh, clinging to the scions of House Nymerian. A few folk uh, are, are huzzahing um, the, the bastard rivers, um, or hollering, the bastard can ride, ha ha ha, type of stuff, <laughs> as Sir Vannon. Uh, a horse! Ooh. Fresh the raven trial. can fly. Uh, <laughs> Instead of the mountain that rides, it's the bastard that rides. Uh, so some of them are coming. Of course I say. But you are still getting a steady stream of uh, yeah, Adam the Archer, young Lord Adam. Huzzah! Uh, and a lot of it's from people that are, again, like toasting you with stuff. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, you are not just toasted with somebody's food. 
but you are downright accosted uh, by a bakery food truck, or rather the <laughs> Westerosi equivalent, uh, as Bessa of Fleabottom uh, bounds up to the lot of you um, with like a uh, her, her her daughter is again in tow uh, with like a s table set up uh, and some heaped baskets of baked goods uh, but she comes bounding up to the lot of you and uh, hurls herself against armored Oris who she is seeing actually in armor for the first time uh, and she's cooing and awing uh, matronly at him uh, and then turns to the lot of you because now about half of you are armored up. And she says, oh, and look at all the rest of you two. Off to storm the Red Keep, it looks like. Oh, so handsome and <laughs> ooh, so strong looking. Ooh, look at you. And she coos over at Bela. Uh, and, and uh, you know, she's meeting some of you for the first time, so you might not know who this crazy lady is. Uh, <laughs> but acting like you're all her long lost kids. Uh, you know, just comes Aww. running right up to you and stuff. Um, and she kind of makes her way through each of you. And, oh, you handsome two that I saw yesterday. Uh, and, and she actually, uh, there's a an audible metallic clang uh, as she swats Sir Vannon on the plate-mailed rump. Um, and, then, wow. uh, and then she glances from Bela to Reyna. Oh, and you two have the look of sisters, that's sure. And oh, look at the little one. Uh, and she goes over to Adam. I call that um, little. She <laughs> pulls you into a hug, um, and you are almost lost in her her voluminous, booksome curves. Um, her huge tracts of land. And she also, <laughs> and she also like smells like baked goods. So it's kind of the perfect <laughs> woman. Cinnamon. Yeah. You know, oh, I was wow. I was having a moment of I never had a mother, and then she ruined it and got all edible on me. Uh, all right. So she just, pulls just Adam to into a hug. A <laughs> <laughs> and, and she goes, "You must be the 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 little Lord Adam the Archer that everyone's all in a tizzy about. Uh, we got the coin you lot sent, much appreciated, and we've been telling everyone to thank you for it, just like that." A handsome slab of Orok asked us to, and she like uh, adorably like you know flirty Fluffy old flirty old lady waitress type. She like oh. fans herself while talking about that handsome slab of Orocs that delivered your coin this morning. Who was that? Was that oh. in character? Yes. Oh well, I missed his name. Uh, but uh, I would have liked to have gotten it. He could have buttered up my buns any time. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome fella. Uh, looked like the, the the Prince of Spring, all done up in uh, gold and green and flowers everywhere, and, and almost as handsome as my Oris. And she reaches out and, and uh, pinches his cheek. She can barely reach it, and he blushes and pulls away and grins. And Are we talking about Sir Orsi. Garland? Possibly. It sounds uh, like a Tyrell. Quick note, it's Garland with no D on the end. Um, just, yeah, just, just so you know. Um, Mr. Dreamy uh, Pants. And it certainly sounds like him. Uh, if pressed, she will describe a, a you know, lantern-jawed fellow with a neatly trimmed beard, short-cut brown hair, um, green That's eyes it. to die over and wearing gold and green armor with flowers on it. So mm. It certainly sounds like Sir Garland. Uh, and behind her, you can hear uh, her daughter, the only other one of the lasses left. Um, and she's actually hawking their their sausage rolls and, and some buns and stuff uh, and saying, uh, you know, um, oh crap, I need to double check on the money. I want to say a groat is the smallest, <clears throat> like, copper coin, but gee, normally they're like, normally a copper penny, but just a groat today, thanks to Lord Adam the Archer. Uh, hey, praise Lord Adam, thanking the coin purse, Adam the Archer, as accurate with generosity as he is, a clean-fledged arrow, 
Adam Archer. And just every now and then someone's like, hey, and they wave their chicken leg or their sausage roll or their sweet biscuit uh, or whatever in the air. And you notice <laughs> that they're not the only merchants doing this. Like, lots of merchants are bragging about their low, low prices and mentioning Adam the Archer or thanks to House Nymerian or that sort of thing in just the general background noise wow. of the tourney grounds. Of inspiration! I... Goodness. <laughs> oh my. I, this has got the, the touch of Elena Tyrell all over it. <laughs> you think? So, <laughs> let it ride. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Out of character, uh, they would be saying normally, uh, you know, for some stuff, a lot of them are like, normally half a groat, but just half penny, thanks to Adam the Archer. So it's going from two pennies to a half penny for some stuff. You know, you just hear wow. that sort of talk a lot from the various vendors. Like, they're all offering fairly substantial discounts on their, uh, you know, meat <laughs> on a stick uh, you know, type of stuff. In this case, it's all the yummy baked goods. Um, this morning, it's it's uh, hot cross buns, sweet buns with uh, raisins uh, and sausage rolls and honeyed biscuits. That's their breakfast fare. Uh, that uh, is on offer from the small stall run by run for poppies. Oh, uh, raisins! I don't so, like raisins. Uh, so yeah, that's all going on. Um, I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm imagining like things with like. Um, I, I sort of imagine sort of biscuits in the shape of arrows and stuff. <laughs> uh, they they didn't go to that <laughs> level of trouble just yet. Uh, it's, it's a wolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I'll say it now. My, I need to get my Ooh. brand on point. <laughs> oh. Um, so you do so, yeah. you know, to uh, sponsor or, or, or be a spokesperson for an arrow manufacturer. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. Adam's choice. And then she goes, this is the best Fletcher in Kingsland. Oh, what about uh, <laughs> Fletcher? Fletcher. Um, <laughs> If you want to shoot like me, you need a hearty breakfast. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, yeah, Betta of Flea Bottom does immediately kick back into mothering mode, and then she goes, "Oh, yeah, and I just heard that you lot were busy racing. Have you had breakfast? Come on, come on, have some breakfast. Ah, you've already paid for it, right?" And she gives you an elbow. Uh, that almost knocks you off balance, Lady Reyna. She's a uh, she's uh, you know got a little more mass than you, but she gives you like a playful elbow in the ribs. Goes, you've certainly already paid for it. Uh, so come on, come on. Who wants biscuits and sausages? And come on, eat Here. up, eat up. All of them. Mm. <laughs> uh, so um... get it all like wrapped up in a cloth so that we can. Carry it to our seats to watch Oris. Uh, Oris, for his part, um, gives uh, Willa, the, the kind of sister that you know uh, from his childhood, he makes a very big show of pulling out a silver coin and uh, you know plunking it metallically down on the table and then gesturing to the lot of you uh, that you can eat up on, on his uh, proverbial dime. Um, and uh, so yeah, everyone's able to grab whatever delicious baked goods they want. Excellent. Excellent, yeah. We'll eat. Uh, and it's actually not bad marketing either for them. Because literally every scion of House Nymerian is standing around there eating their food and looking good natured mm. and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, like, sure enough, um, the proud moment between, uh, you know, little sister and big brother is broken up by a bunch of other small folk coming, uh, you know, shouldering their way up and, and uh, pulling out half pennies and, and uh, you know, squabbling over some food. Uh, and then that all gets interrupted as the lot of you are kind of milling your way over directly towards like the tourney, you know, the, the joust prep area, um, 
with uh, a, a holler. Um, is, well, you got any ale to wash it down with? Ah, uh, you don't. Ah, fuck. Fine. Two of the sausage biscuits then. And it's Nathan Lucas snaggling <laughs> with Willa uh, about some food. <laughs> and then he turns and he looks over his shoulder and goes, Peck, where'd you go, you little cunt? Come here, Peck. Peck, do you want a sausage biscuit? Ah, fine. Make it a sausage biscuit for Peck, too. Three sausage biscuits. I'll buy him three. I get it for the price of two, don't I? I don't. You don't have ale and you won't cut me a discount. Ah, fine, fine. Canny wench. Give me a look at the goods, at least. And she makes a point of, like, bending over a little extra. It's all good-natured <laughs> stuff to a curvy, low-born gal. Um, so she takes it in stride. Uh, Oris gives him a bit of a look, but when she laughs about it, it, it he doesn't start a war between Dorn and the Stormlands over it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. The war of kids. Jogging up uh, in the wake of brash Nathan Lugas uh, is his squire, uh, Josman Peckledin, a uh, Westerlander. Uh, and he's trotting to take up, uh, in part because he's carrying a bunch of shit. Um, he's got a lot of Nathan's stuff <clears throat> that is clearly looking to get delivered to the tourney ground, but he's also carrying a large shield in each hand. Uh, and he's got, uh, a pair of them. None of them are the shields of House Lugus. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, you guys can tell at a glance. Uh, these are the the uh, the lance scarred shields uh, of House Rudiger and House Caron, which, because of your attorney specialties and because you guys have been here, that's the knights that Nathan has beat uh, in the first few rounds. So Peck is huffing and puffing his way through oh. the tourney grounds. Uh, <laughs> and as soon as he gets there, Nathan Wait. goes, ha, 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 see? Look at that. Ah, boy's going to have his fucking hands full. I, I tell you what. Are you, are you supposed to ransom this back? <laughs> I, I sell the cunts back their armor and their horse, but I refund them just enough for a shield. I keep that little bastard fair and square. <laughs> but sir, they're going on the walls back in the... Uh, back in Castle Lugus. <laughs> nope. We keep our... our we, we, uh, we hold on to our victories. And with a little luck, uh, this boy will be carrying Bronze Yarn Royce's shield around by the end of the day. Oh. He, he says it completely fucking straight-faced. Like, wow. like that, that, he legitimately that... is like, like I'm sure this is a thing that could happen in this dimension. <laughs> right? like, oh, yeah. out, like, but it's the same bravado that he showed going up against Sir Raynard Rudiger and, I mean, in his defense, Lord Bryce Karen, the Lord of Nightsong, that's oh. a Stormlands marcher lord that's held the Dornish marches for hundreds of years. Like, Beating Bryce Karen ain't nothing, uh, but yeah, he says it with that Nathan Lucas bravado, like he's he's gonna fucking take down Bronze John Royce. Well, cousin, fortune favors the bold, and that was definitely bold. <laughs> uh, so then there's a, a few moments as Peck tries to figure out how to proudly display uh, his honorable knights battle trophies and eat a sausage biscuit uh, or a sausage roll at the same time. He eventually gonna... sets, sets some of them down almost like a, like a, a tower shield. Uh, so they're leaning up against him uh, and then he tries to wolf down his biscuit because it looks like he's under clear orders to display the colors. So as soon as he eats the biscuits, he goes back to like holding up the shields real high so everybody can see who Nate and Lucas has uh, defeated so far. Uh, Rusty. Um, yeah. As a, somebody who had previously um, went against a uh, Royce, I'm going to hold up my wine glass and kind of give him a 
give a Nathan Lugas a kind of a, a, a salute. Uh, to you, Lugas, and to the Royces. Uh, I'd toast you back if you bought me a drink. Well, to buy you, we have our home wine here. Have some. <laughs> I knew I liked you Dornish bastards for a reason. <laughs> that sounds really good. Chugging <laughs> some. Um, he goes, oh, wait, speaking of bastards, where's that tall fella of yours? Ah, you. <laughs> Listen, boy. Uh, and he eyeballs uh, Oris. He goes, listen, you're after Hugh uh, this morning, right? Hugh of the Vale, he knocked Peck on his ass, so should I wager on you or not? Uh, Oris shrugs. He goes, it's up to you how you spend House Lucas money, m m sir. Uh, kind of a sulky, bastardy answer. Yeah, or so then, say so yes. Then, so then Nathan turns to the rest of you. <laughs> And he goes, oh, we found the only humble bastard in King's Landing. What is it? Hugh did a number on Peck. Should I bet on your big fella here? Or uh, he's on a dour the... one, but uh, he wins. I'd, I'd bet on him. I'd bet on him if I were you. Definitely you. Should bet. Yeah. It just depends. Do you want to make money or lose money? Ah, oh, saucy Dornish women. Fine, fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Got a mouth on you, you two. <laughs> Gonna make some poor cut miserable. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'd the rather, dream. <laughs> I'd rather right? make money than lose it, I guess. All right, I'll take your word for it, but better not I'll be some Dornish trick. Uh, uh, Orton just <laughs> reminded me, there's some history there. Yeah. He says, <laughs> like, I wasn't there. Orton legitimately, legitimately did maybe just have to remind him like hey don't forget like this is kind of weird our budding friendship is a little awkward given the histories of the Stormlands uh, yeah but like you suspect he got a, a dry lecture uh, from Orton at some point while I, he was sober enough to remember it momentarily. Raise another cup. There may have been history but I wasn't there. Died ah, speaking of not being there I wish I'd gone into the woods to murder Lord What's His Fuck with you lot now. I still can't believe that scrawny little <laughs> bastard got a kill that I didn't. Uh, <laughs> well, father's I mean, gonna ride me hard for that one. Well, I mean, oh. you, you got to have fun in the meantime, so. <laughs> that I did. That blonde lass back at Green Tree. She. She and I did quite a number on one another. Oh, I yeah. earned a few bruises that night. It might not have been in a fight, but uh, she she left some marks on me. I'll tell you that for nothing, boy. And he gives Adam an elbow that almost <laughs> caused an injury. Well, quite. Good for you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to. Well, you don't find yourself up to it. Maybe Adam can help you next time. <laughs> well, Adam, this one, help me with a woman. He's telling you out, Adam. Get him. What? Next, next, the scrawny boy will help me finish a drink too. I uh, just, come on. Look my, at uh, him. He, he's, he's young, but he is my brother. But brother, might I suggest not volunteering me for everything? <laughs> <laughs> Your brother, so what? Orton is my brother. He'll never help me with a woman or finish a drink. Brother. <laughs> you know, he raised a valid point. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I think the last, I la the last thing anyone needs is me as their wingman. <laughs> <clears throat> I think he'd be a fine wing man. Anyway. <laughs> you know what? I think I he might be good at that kind of Serrano de Bergerac sort of thing. But, um, yeah. You must tell her uh. she's a dirty girl. <laughs> <laughs> dirty girl. So, so romantic. I don't think he needs help getting him in bed. I don't think that's the issue. Uh, trumpets fan for, fanfare in the near distance. Um, and the jousts uh, 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 commence, 
as though summoned uh, and brought into your little clearing of delicious baked goods, uh, an arm and back sword, Jasmine Peckledon, uh, a roaring Nathan Lugus, etc., etc. Uh, as Bela and Oris take their leave to go to like mm. the the prep area, uh, Illyrio Mopatis uh, shows up uh, in your your little uh, clearing full of deliciousness and and wagers and uh, roaring stormlanders. And he goes, ah, friends! And he rubs his many bejeweled ha hands together. I was worried I almost wouldn't find you before the, the day's contests commenced. Alas, I'm afraid I overslept and missed the horsemanship. Uh, it was early and my night was late. <laughs> I trust you understand. But congratulations are in order, I hear. Sir Vannon uh, taking the wreath and uh, the rest of you not far behind. Excellent work, excellent work. Though, I'm afraid you <laughs> missed out on my coin for once. Ah, but likely just the once. We'll see how the rest of the day goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, well, Squire. I, 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 I rather, rather so. placed it anyway. Uh, Philio, help yourself to food and drink. Uh, God knows you're paying for it. <laughs> ah, I am not a man who says no to such invitations. And he pointed oh, his ears over at Bessa and he goes, or to other invitations and gives her a salacious wink. Uh, and then he makes his way uh, you know, two steps away to Willa and the little cart. Uh, and, and ooh, honeyed ones. And starts grabbing a couple of honey, yeah, honey biscuits and, and starting eating. Uh, in between bites, he goes, ah, uh, I see some of the lads are making ready. Uh, hmm. Ah, Michael Redford uh, from the Vale. I think he's squires for Lynn Corbray. The lad's supposed to be rather dangerous. Ooh, but he's up against the young Alan Ambrose. He's got the favor of his betrothed, some Tyrell girl, I recall. Ah, who are we wagering on? <laughs> Besides me wagering a sausage biscuit would also hit the spot. Nom, nom, nom. So, go ahead and uh, update uh, the Google Doc as needed. We have the Squire Michael Redfort up against the Squire Alan Ambrose. Redfort squires to Sir Lynn Corbray. Alan Ambrose is a dashing young Reach Squire betrothed to a Tyrell cousin and riding with her favor in the first round as he unhorsed Tyrek Lannister he shouted uh, you know for my lady's honor in the the wind it's so romantic it is very romantic yeah the smart money is on young Michael if it goes to swords uh, he is uh, you know squiring to Lynn Corbray who is known for his sword play uh, and Michael Redfort has a reputation for being quite handy with a longsword for a squire. Um, even a horse, small favorite for Michael Redfort. So, uh, everybody's got a couple seconds to get the Google Doc updated. Place your wagers. Uh, is anybody not ready? Ready, ready. Good once, okay. good twice three times uh, the squires clash uh, they are just about even uh, on the third pass uh, young Alan Ambrose is knocked from the saddle it looks like bad luck more than anything else it happens um, but he pinwheels in the saddle almost stays to it but is eventually knocked to the ground he clambers to his feet and gamely draws his sword against Michael Redfort, uh, the most dangerous squire in the Vale, uh, and Redfort handily beats him afoot. Um, Ambrose is no pushover. There aren't many young men from the Reach that aren't decent with sword and lance, uh, but Redfort is really good. Uh, it's like the first pass type of thing. Uh, it's a, a parry, a riposte, uh, and Redfort is disarmed, or Red, Redfort disarms Alan quite handily. Uh, it's a quick, just one, two, three, fights over 
uh, once the sword play commences. So, uh, Michael Redfort of the Veil uh, takes the win there. Uh, and coming up next is Hugh of the Veil against Oris Waters, Squire to House Nymerian. Uh, the Nymerians are a Dornish house of ancient proud lineage, <laughs> and several of them have started to win stuff here at Princess Nursella's name day town. I don't like them. Hugh, Hugh of the Vale is actually lowborn, but squire to John Aaron, the Hand of the King. Uh, and you see him arriving just in the nick of time. He is also Lord of the Vale of Aaron, uh, so he hollers out some congratulations to Michael uh, as young Redfort is leaving uh, the field. Um, and, and Michael Redfort takes it very graciously. Uh, and Lynn Corbray sketches John Aaron a polite uh, bow uh, before leading the horse and stuff away. Um, remember, John Aaron is Hand of the King and Lord of the Vale of Aaron. His last squires were uh, King Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. And Hugh of the Vale is lowborn. Um, now, Ned Stark was the second son of House Stark, but Robert Baratheon was the heir to Storm's End at the time. So, uh, where I'm going with this is John Aaron doesn't pluck the low hanging fruit, right? Uh, he's had some really, really prominent and powerful, uh, you know, squires. Hugh of the Vale isn't that. So he must be showing promise in other ways. And he did take out Josman Peckleton in the first pass. Uh, like he beat uh, Nathan Lucas's squire quite handily. Um, so uh, bets are in. Looks like um, I don't see one from Felicia. Are you just doing the, the Google Doc? I am. Okay. So uh, bets are I'll in. I bet on Oris. Yeah, I, I figured. I'm not assuming uh, <laughs> officially. Uh, so, the joust commences. Uh, give me one moment, because I do have to roll for both sides, unfortunately. And that. Come on, Oris. <clears throat> uh, for this, um, we have inflated Hue of the Veil's stats to not Hello. just squire level. Um, because he's a really good squire to a very prominent knight. Um, wow. Uh, both lances shatter on the first pass. Um, Oris's, Oris's shatters uh, with a 24, <laughs> however. Like, every one of his kept dice came up sixes. That is a notable shattering, um, and it pounds Hugh of the Vale out of the saddle. Um, that is a very difficult ride check, and he is not quite good enough at that uh, Get to, stay, to stay a horse. Um, that was, yeah, that was a good time for everything to come up sixes. Um, that said, uh, Hugh of the Vale does uh, only kind of take a moment to gather himself, kind of his helmet shakes, and then he clambers uh, quickly to his feet, uh, and um, he's got just uh, some other squire from the Reach squiring for him. John Aaron, the Hand of the King, did not. Like, he symbolically squired for him in the first round, but John Aaron is sitting down talking to Stannis instead of squiring for him now. Uh, but he goes and gets um, a great sword. Uh, from a, a nearby squire, and Oris just goes kind of trotting back towards Bela uh, on his horse, uh, and he dismounts and he keeps his eyes on his opponent and just reaches out with one long arm. He goes, whichever. Uh, the options uh, are Oris's array of big-ass weapons. There's a honkin' big war spear. There is his honkin' big hammer, 
or there is his mattock, which is kind of a, a an axe, pickaxe. Yeah. Uh, the the head of it has been wrapped for tourney fighting. Is, is there uh, one that he seems to use most often? Is best at? Uh, you guys have only actually seen him fight on foot once, and I rolled a d3 to see which one he grabbed. Uh, that was when you guys got attacked by the worst bandits ever in like session <laughs> one. So he literally reached over his shoulder to see what handle he grabbed from the back of the wagon. So you're making a big decision in young Oris's life. Uh, me mechanically uh, the spear and the axe are both going to do about the same damage that is very high um, the hammer uh, and this is just because you've got lots of fighting <clears throat> the hammer would do a point less damage but it brings the shattering quality into play mm -hmm. where you start doing two points of damage to your opponent's shit uh, so he would just start breaking this dude's armor Anytime he hits by five, Hugh loses two points of armor value. So the hammer has built-in debuffs. The other two are a hair more damage. Uh, but yeah, this is part of why it mattered who squired for Oris today. I'm going to hand him the spear. Okay, uh, and that makes sense for your character also. Yeah. It is very much not your spear. Uh, yeah. This thing, to you, uh, this is like the sturdy, thick construction that you would use for like a tent pole, right? <laughs> like it's it's bigger around than yours. It's fire hardened and broad. It's reinforced in several points with like metal uh, wrappings. Uh, and the head of the spear is not the narrow, fine, nimble Valyrian steel of Sunfire the ancestral weapon of House Nymerian, it's a boar yeah. spear. Uh, and it's, like, big even for a boar spear. Like, you get the feeling that uh, uh, Wooly Will pays extra for sturdiness in all the stuff that they have. Like, it's not Castle Forge for, like, plus one quality. It's, yeah, all my stuff pays, you know, costs a few extra silver, to just like not break when Oris uses it, <laughs> uh, right? Like it's just, it's all just a little bit bigger. Um, so he takes the spear and his uh, his turny, like the narrow slit of his visor, uh, it, it, he nods towards you, you know, politely. Mm -hmm. He's not being like brusque and rude about it, uh, but he takes the spear. Um, he doesn't give it an artful twirl in the Dornish distracting nimbly pimply <laughs> fashion like he spins <sighs> it once to get it into a combat grip uh, in order to fight with it at range to make up for the range of his opponent's greatsword mm -hmm. uh, and then the fight commences um or she got this uh he probably does um <laughs> Because Oris has a lot of armor mastery, uh, and I'm doing the math, and it would take hitting by 10 or more for any damage to get through Ooh. from Hugh uh, against Oris. Um, because, uh, well, he's got improved armor mastery too. Uh, and yes, also, he's thick. Uh, <laughs> and if any damage does get through, Oris just gets a free attack. Like, that's your fucking reward. Uh, if he decides <laughs> to take uh, a, a minor injury from it, he just gets to hit you for free. Yeah. I um, need to get that talent. <laughs> uh, Berserker is maybe not Bela's style. It's but not. It is, but... <laughs> but it is pretty cool. If you've got a five endurance so that you can take a lot of injuries and wounds, uh, it's it's pretty nice. Oris is built first and foremost to kind of tank for the party without losing combat efficiency. Mm -hmm. So Berserker was kind of a natural for him. Um, but uh, yeah, so those roles went about like I thought they would. So we're just going to narrate this instead of a turn by turn back and forth. Uh, just comparing base damage values um, and some of these roles. Um, they both... They both come in with, with combat training. Uh, Hugh of the Veil vale is strapping for a 16 or 18 year old. Uh, he's no Oris 
but like he'd be on the varsity football team, right? Like he's not a small kid, you know, uh, and he has been taught well. Uh, it's not uncommon for squires to the king or given this king's relationship with the hand and the reputation for honor that John Aaron has, uh, it's not impossible for these squires to spar with knights of the king's guard or certainly with uh with you uh for instance lucaris or with aaron santagar your knight that was uh you know master at arms of the red keep like squires to the hand and the king if they want they can get pretty good at fighting that does not seem to have happened with tyrek and lancel lannister but they're also just not built for it the way hugh of the vale is um, but Hugh of the Veil vale seems to have been taking advantage of that combat training. And you know that, Lucaris. You've seen him sparring with some pretty good dudes. Uh, and swordplay in particular, he would sometimes get some, some mentorship from Barristan Selmy. Because Barristan Selmy enjoys helping people learn how to be good at murder. Right? Like, Barristan Selmy also... Oh, he's good. He occasionally gave you pointers. You know, he just... <laughs> Barristan Selmy doesn't like to... Don't tell them. He doesn't like to see people being bad at swording, right? So he so, just, you know... So Barristan the Kingsguard, it's not murder, it's state-sanctioned killing. Well, yeah, you know, but... <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... And he wants you to be that, good at it. Yeah, that shows in Hue of the Veil's form, uh, and it's a very well-crafted sword. Uh, you can kind of tell it's Castle Forge, it's good balance... It's not throwing his weight off when he uses it, but he's also not using it like some fucking wildling with a great axe. They're controlled swings, it's measured stuff. None of that necessarily surprises the crowd coming from the squire to John Aaron. What might surprise the crowd is that the same is true of Oris. You guys haven't actually seen him fight he did a few passes with the lance, and they were very crisp. And you saw him one-shot a, a bandit once, between the rest of you one-shotting bandits. Um, Oris is really fucking good at this, in a way that you guys can all recognize. He's not just bashing, um, like Sandor and Gregor Clegane on the show. Uh, they're what some... Um, European martial art enthusiast nerds call like bashers or sometimes buffers where they just use their size and they telegraph everything and they hit real hard they often do this to Gwendolyn Christie as Brienne of Tarth on the show also where they show somebody is strong by like super telegraphing all their shit but then it works anyway because they're so strong like Oris could probably get away with that but he doesn't um, Wooly Will has clearly been teaching him how to use his size and strength and reach uh, and it's perhaps a little surprising to see um, so they both are actually really good at this uh, neither of them are using weapons that are custom tailored to fight against a, an opponent in very well crafted full plate mail so it actually kind of takes a while um, because neither one's using a can opener uh, they're not, Bobby, you know, Bobby smacking like each other. Um, Bobby B's actually not here yet. Uh, he uh -huh. has he has slept in enough. He's not here yet. Um, it's, oh, good. It's it's John Aaron and Stannis Baratheon, who are aptly er, er, raptly watching this fight. Stannis is actually small talking with John Aaron. Um, it's a little unsettling, uh, like more so than the violence on display, where your society is forcing 14 and 15 year old children to try and kill each other with sticks and horses um, <laughs> like it's a little unsettling watching Stannis lean over in his chair and like talk and smile with John Aaron uh, between rounds and stuff yeah like it's weird and his jaw didn't even like break off or nothing oh um, <laughs> but yeah it's so, like they're both there they're hanging out um, but uh, you sure it didn't break his face <laughs> yeah like it didn't crack off or anything um, so they're here. Uh, Robert isn't, and he's probably going to get some shit from John Aaron for it later. Stannis doesn't give people shit, uh, but but John Aaron 
is a pretty good dude. So he might tease King Robert a bit later. Uh, but it's actually a, a hell of a fight. Uh, neither of them are bleeding, but by the end of it, um, Hugh has actually backpedaled a few steps away and like lifted his offhand um, off the grip low on the pommel of the sword to like buy a second and he takes his helmet off and you can see him like gasping deeply for air as this fight progresses longer than anyone is planning um Oris doesn't uh you remember that the visor doesn't go up on his helmet um but Oris has expressed wariness uh, about castle folk and their cunning before so Oris doesn't like lower his guard he stops attacking and gives him a second uh, but like Oris doesn't pull his helmet off or anything that uh, but he gives him that you know the break uh, but you guys can see that like Oris is kind of breathing hard in there too so keep fanning yourself Ash Oris is breathing <laughs> he's a machine. hard uh, he's a <laughs> but uh it's it's a long fight um but just a few exchanges after that, um, Oris is able to use the length of the spear uh, and actually use the butt end of the spear uh, to just kind of bash you off balance. And then he charges with the spear haft itself in kind of a bull rush that keeps you off balance. And then he threatens Hugh's face with a flurry, uh, not terribly different, from some of Bela's uh, rushes with flurries from spear strikes now that there's an unarmored area. Um, and, and then after one cut gets through, yeah. it's a very thin graze, but then the cross beams on the boar spear actually just fucking jab Hugh right in like the, the, the face. Uh, and it like rocks him back pretty hard. Um, uh, and he goes ahead and he stumbles to his knee uh, and drops his sword and like one hand goes to his eye because he's like, ow, fuck. Uh, the, the, I, got, I got a good chunk of spear in the eye um, and he's not like, like bleeding terribly, but it's like, shit, that sucked. Uh, and he like drops to a knee uh, and, and yields with, with open hands. Uh, but Ooh. it takes a while. Yeah. It's, and both of them look pretty good. Like Hughes... Hughes rocking a fighting of five and some longsword specialty dice. Like, you guys, you know, game recognize game. Like, you guys can see, like, he's pretty good, but Oris uses his armor maybe better than anyone you've seen before. Um, the strong sider has improved armor, has armor mastery one. Oris has improved armor mastery. So, like, it's... Oris knows his shit. And that's maybe a surprise that you, you haven't seen him have to do that before. Um, the small folk freak out. They were going to be happy either way because it was a bastard fighting a lowborn. Whoever won, the small folk were going to be like, yeah, suck it, nobles. Right? Like, small <laughs> folk are, you know, they're having a good time. But you notice Revolution! That, yeah, yeah, like the, the knights and the martially inclined lords here also are, are cheering on both of these squires at the end of the fight. Um, so, yeah, because it was a, a pretty solid display. Uh, so, yeah. There we go. House Nymerian, your streak thus far continues. Oof. That made Maybe. me wealthy. <laughs> yeah, and I um, would have to set the on him instead of five. <laughs> Yeah, I put 50 gold dragons down on that. Yeah, yep. holy I, cow. I, I saw you clarify your typo, Ash, so... I'm sorry, Yeah, no, but, I, I, but I know, yeah. I'm like... But, I yeah. also <laughs> met 50! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was on the verge of going like, Eric, are you sure you want to put 50 on that? That's really high! <laughs> and it, again, it, it was a good fight. Uh, like, I don't want to... You know, Hugh was not a pushover. Uh, yeah. But just looking at their their numbers, uh, worse. If, if, if that yeah, one. if it, if it um, had been someone lesser than than Hugh, I, like I, I would probably have put more. But I was like, yeah, this guy's good, so I'm gonna be cautious. Uh, John Aaron gets to his feet, uh, and he's actually sitting, like the big chair, is like <laughs> chair force one. 
So, uh, because Robert has sat in it before, in this tourney ground, it's the throne. Uh, but John Aaron can sit in that, because he's Hand of the King. So he's actually in, like, the big chair. Uh, Stannis is not in the next biggest chair, because that is Cersei's chair. And people don't sit in Cersei's chair. Uh, but he is in, like, the other chair on the other side of Chair Force One. Uh, but John Aaron actually gets up out of his chair uh, and is like, you know, well struck, Hugh, and Waters, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's like, he's cheering exuberantly enough for both of them that you can actually kind of make out his famously bad teeth for the first time. Which again is a delicious detail you guys get because your passive awareness is high. He's a little self-conscious about his teeth. So he does not often show them. You didn't see them at the feet. He kind of talks with his you know, lips over his teeth and stuff. But he's got some pretty gnarly, like 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 brown teeth. That's one of his unfortunately defining characteristics of an otherwise like super upright, pure noble dude. It's one of the few <clears throat> negative cosmetic traits that George R. R. Martin has ever given to like a good guy. Like normally in a lot of Martin's work looking bad makes you bad including fat shaming which i try to soften by making some characters cooler you know, it's but, really uh, common in pretty yeah. much all but, yeah. Stuff, yeah but yeah john aaron is one of the few like good and honorable dudes that has a clear physical downside but where i'm going with this is john aaron is clearly proud of his squire and also not afraid of being congratulatory to some no-name bastard that just beat him so john aaron's on his feet um, lots of the, uh, you know, um, Nathan Lugas is wooing it up like he's at a fucking Skinner concert. Uh, <laughs> like he's, he's all, woo, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, he's, he's, he's bragging like Oris was his own. Like, like, take that, you, fuck the veil. Ha 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 ha. I know this guy. Like, like, in your face, John Aaron. And John Aaron thing and no my, you know, but like, he's, He's talking about it like, you know, that's my neighbor's kid that just won at state in varsity football, right? That's <laughs> that's that's kind of how 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 Nathan is lugasing it up just now. Ooh, um, I know him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that lugasing. Uh, I love that Lucas has become now a verb. Yes. Uh, so yeah, and of course, Bessa of Flea Bottom uh, is bouncing exuberantly uh, and you can tell for a second <laughs> she thinks about trying to go up and over the railing to like 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 run run the field uh, but she stops herself and instead like turns to the nearest of you uh, and Reyna you are swooped up in a hug that lifts you off your feet as she is like shrieking and cackling and and oh look at my boy look how big he got Oh, <laughs> seven hills. <laughs> that one sucked on the titties before. She throws <laughs> to anyone in earshot um, with absolute shamelessness. But her I daughter Willa does, yeah, Willa does turn beet red at that. <laughs> uh, but Bessa is just like, no, <laughs> nursed that one, and look at him now. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> we need to recruit this woman. Right? The milk she produces. <laughs> yeah. So. It's a strategic investment. Uh, so, uh, that ends that round. Um, Oris does remove his helmet, uh, and you actually see a sunny grin. Uh, it's brightest and pointed towards Bela, because she's the one that's like out there with him, uh, and it's a little weird. Uh, like you don't often see Oris like grin at all, like like barely smiles. Um, but he is big mood Oris. Like whatever he feels, he feels bigly, uh, and this is him in his natural element, uh, feeding people with stuff. Uh, so yeah, he is a super big grin, uh, but he he. Uh, my face hurts know, from smuggling. He, he heads over uh, and he, you know, he gives 
uh, Hugh of the Vale a big clap on the shoulder, uh, because partially because Hugh is lowborn, Oris is maybe a bit friendlier than him, uh, with like like Lancel Lannister didn't get a clap on the shoulder because it might have started a fight, right? Like you don't, <laughs> don't, you don't do that to Lannisters, uh, but yeah. these two like both you know kind of seem to mutual respect uh, from guys in over their head in King's Landing perhaps <laughs> um, and then he uh, you know uh, somewhat uh, awkwardly uh, bows uh, you know normally like small folk can get by with a bit of a half bow or a you know with the women can just kind of curtsy and nobody cares how it looks uh, but Adam you've been trying to help Oris with more proper highborn bows now that he knows he's a highborn bastard uh, so it's not the most graceful bow uh, but he does you know pretty solid effort uh, I'm so proud of him and he, you know he bows towards uh, you know John Aaron in Chair Force One and, and uh, Stannis Baratheon kind of remembering his his honors you know type of stuff um, so yeah um, everybody is gracious um, and then you know, Oris turns this kind of sheepish, proud uh, smile towards the lot of you, and you know, claws his hair out in the, you know, in his helm or not, the ponytail kind of always falls loose when he fights, so he has to pull a couple of strands of hair out, uh, and he smiles over over towards you guys. It might I'll be more for you, like, mom. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then they clear the field. Uh, and you guys are free to role play a bit. Uh, Adam uh, or uh, Robert and Kevin are fine. They just had to go AFK for a second. Uh, but the rest of you are free to role play uh, as Bela uh, leads uh, Oris's huge courser uh, mm -hmm. back over, and, and Oris trots a few steps ahead of you uh, to <laughs> go get an exuberant hug uh, from uh, Bessa. Oh. Oh, that was exciting. Also, that's a hell of a fight there. Uh, he does this, like, yeah, face. <laughs> like, his eyebrows go up, and he's very kind of expressive for once. And he's like, yeah, yeah that... Ooh, uh, I was a little worried. Uh, he held on longer than I thought he would, but... Ooh, he was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're one to talk. He he blushes a bit at that, uh, and uh, Bessa is still like clinging to him and hopping up and down excitedly, um, which could be where some of the blushing's coming from, because she's now hallooing to anyone nearby that looks like a knight or squire, <laughs> uh, and trying to charge them to suck on her titties as well. Uh, <laughs> So the blushing <laughs> might not just be because of your rare compliment. <laughs> uh, but now she's like, they'll make you a winner too. <laughs> and, you know, just all that stuff. So she's having fun embarrassing her children. Hell yeah. <laughs> no one could ever yeah. accuse that woman of not loving her children enough. Right? Not normal in this setting. Like uh, so yeah, they're uh, having a good time. Uh, you do notice a, a rush of people buying some more baked goods from that stall because Willa is opportunistically pulling them over. Uh, like, <laughs> Horses he grew toy. up. <laughs> he, he grew up eating these very biscuits. Uh, you know, like she's she's hollering, you know, waving people over and and having a good time with it and stuff. Um, Bless so that went uh, pretty well. Uh, I'm very <laughs> proud of all of you. Um, the next wave uh, of Squire's Jousts uh, are Merit Frey, the grown man that is nominally still a squire, uh, against Miles. That's all his name is. He's just... Uh, Miles is a squire 
to Sir Desmond Grell. Uh, but he is a lowborn squire that has also kind of gotten the position by merit uh, or perhaps being the son of a long-serving retainer uh, and that sort of thing. Um, as they ride up, we're actually going to do no wagers on this one, so save yourself oh. a bit of typing. Uh, okay. But Merit Frey comes up kind of wobbly in the saddle and not in armor. Um, and you know those those Frey leather caps that they wear with like the flaps that come down over their ears and stuff? He's got, Frey hat. He, he's got that in his hands uh, as he's kind of humbly walking his horse up towards the stands with John Aaron and stuff. Um, and you can't quite make it out, uh, but it's full of a kind of gratingly polite, oh, you know, sorry, my lord, and this, that, the other, yes, your grace, all these honorifics kind of jumbling up together in that toadying way. Um, and he's just like, oh, just with my head, I can't do it. And I just, I took out that Dane boy, but oh, I've just got this crashing headache and blah, 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 blah. Um, and he's just he's just waving off the fight. Uh, it's partially a note uh, that when uh, Robar Royce was too injured to continue, he still showed up as armored as his bandages would literally allow. Um, Merit Frey has not done that. He's just back in like the drab Frey leathers and his tunic and, and all that bullshit. Uh, so he hasn't kind of shown that extra respect, which is just something that knights notice. Uh, but yeah, he bows out. Uh, and the lowborn young Miles, squire to uh, House Grell, Sir Desmond of House Grell, uh, advances to the next round. Stannis is back to being a statue with an actual frown of disapproval. Not just his resting Stannis face, but like he's actually bothered by this. Perhaps uh, by Frey's lack of, you know, stick with it. Perhaps by this kind of breach of etiquette of it was his duty. not announcing it ahead of time, but also not showing up in honor to make a show of your submission, right? Like he did it the worst way you could do it he still wasted everyone's time and he didn't do it to show up dressed up you know what I mean like like this is a oh those fucking phrase right like this is the worst of both uh, but uh, young Miles advances for the next turn um, some of you have enough education and stuff or breeding or nightly tournament -y stuff um, that Merit Frey complaining of a headache reminds you the reason he is still a squire uh, was a terrible head injury he got as a squire fighting the Kingswood Brotherhood very notably as the least of squires brought into the Kingswood during that campaign but he actually squired alongside like Jamie Lannister and shit uh, but he got completely whooped on during all of that. Um, and he took a bad enough head injury uh, that he swore off fighting apparently until this week. This week. Uh, like, it was a bad enough kind of blinding headaches made even worse by him being afraid and the way he carried on about them type of thing. But he had a long-standing head injury uh, that he apparently thought he could come back and and fight through, uh, but was not the case. Oh, man, no, like, you made me feel like a modicum of sympathy for a free, how dare you? <laughs> um, remember, though, also, uh, that uh, he is afraid like for starters that's a point against good him good point good point he's he's also a son of lord walder himself uh his wife was a mary craig uh and he's got that craig size 
Uh, the cray calls are fucking big, right? Like the strong boar is a cray call. One of the few men that Jamie Lannister's internal monologues, Jamie Lannister says, like Lyle cray call is actually stronger than me. Think about what it takes for Jamie Lannister to give anyone credit for anything, right? So Merritt Frey has that Craig Hall bulk, and in the first round, he was gloating about how hard he whooped little Edric Dane, the Lord of Starfall and the youngest squire in this tourney. So, so maybe don't feel too bad for Merritt Frey, uh, you know, given that's who he was up to. Uh, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's just more of um, like Adam knowing a bit of what it's like to have an injury fuck up your squiring. Yeah, um, uh, but yeah, so just, you know, maybe don't feel too bad uh, for young Merritt. Uh, he was also just sticking with part of the Frey legacy. He actually tried to bully Jamie Lannister when they were squires. This is just a pure metagame note. You all have no idea about this in character, but just because he had that Crake Hall size and they were both squiring at Crake Hall Castle, this motherfucker stepped to Jamie Lannister and was like, What up, you little bitch? And like tried to bully Jamie Lannister as a squire. And I just think that's adorable uh, that <laughs> anybody would ever try to bully Jamie fucking Lannister. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but. Who is, who is, who is himself? Oh, he's a lot. Yes. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, that was a thing. Um, the other notable injury that happened from that fight with the Kingswood Brotherhood, and you lot probably know this because it happened from a woman, uh, but Wenda the White Fawn was a female bandit in the Kingswood Brotherhood. And you lot have all been raised on kind of women warriors and stuff. Uh, she was the one that captured him. Uh, and she branded his ass with her mark uh, during his time being captured. Yeah, so so you got <laughs> probably heard about that because of Wenda the White Fawn, who you lot have probably heard of as like the bandit princess of the Kingswood Brotherhood. Look how she may, you know, uh, honorable foe of, you know, the, the rightful Kingsguard. Uh, and she stood up even to the likes of the Sword of the Morning, and you know, so like you gotta play your opponents up in some histories. Um, but yeah, so he uh, he is one of the tragicomic characters to come from House Frey. Um, but yeah, like he was gloating over the shattered body of 13-year-old Lord Edric Dane uh, over in the first round. So don't feel super bad for him, Adam. I can see where the sympathy's coming from. Uh, but it's, it's a worry. green. It's like a green. Just the one. Which brings us to the last pass of the Squire's Joust this round, uh, which is young Meryl Florent up against Osney Kettleblack. Well, I know where I'm going with that. Uh, the Kettle Blacks, you may recall, are the rather brutish family of uh, Hedgedites that have of recent made Sir Vannon Rivers acquaintance. I hear they met in the pavilion grounds even before on the tourney field. Um, Osney is just as big and brutish as his other brothers. And since some of you met their father, uh, you can tell whatever genes Papa Kettle Black has are completely dominant over the genes of of whoever their mother is. Um, yeah, Merritt Frey actually submitted. Yeah, Merritt Frey showed up and then defaulted on the joust in like the least socially acceptable way because he didn't write ahead, but then he also didn't like show up for the joust and then like do pomp and fanfare of of submitting to his opponent. Instead, he showed up in shitty Riverland weathers and went cravenly mewling to the hand of the king and Stannis Baratheon for pity, which is not the way to do it. Uh, but yeah, so that one submitted. Uh, but this one, uh, Meryl Florent 
is the youngest son of the the Brightwater Keep, uh, and he's a squire to Sir Desmond Redwine, uh, who is a reach knight of, of some renown. Uh, the Redwines are prominent families. You guys think their wine is shit, but yeah, they're the house that you know makes the arbor gold. Well, compared to yeah. compared to the Darnish stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, the uh, the Kettle Blacks are a martial family, uh, and Osney Kettle Black probably has about six inches on Meryl Florent. Uh, the Kettle Blacks are all huge, uh, and like I said, much you know, you can tell they're all the spitting image of their father. So whoever their mama is, she has those recessive genes that don't leave an imprint at all. All her kids look just like their fathers, type of thing. The Kettle Blacks are all just huge, uh, with the same look. Uh, those kind of prominent noses, uh, you know, kind of olive hued skin. Uh, they're kind of like big, burly Italian guys. I would put it like, like kind of a little bit darker skin than most Europeans, but dark features, dark hair, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, that's the, the lineup. The, the wagers are probably softly favoring Osney Kettle Black from just size. Uh, but uh, it looks like bets are in. Um, oh, and yeah, by the way, like in during the in-between rounds, Illyrio Mopatis is like all wringing his hands and, and literally clutching at some pearls he has on him for clutching at. Uh, just falling over himself, but I, I hope... Uh, that 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 young Frey, it's dude's like thirty five. I hope that young <laughs> Frey recovers eventually from those <laughs> grievous injuries, uh, and he's just being like very, uh, you know, over the top dramatic. Obsequious. About, oh, I, I hope those Freys are all right, you know, and, and that sort of thing, you know, just in that oily associ way. Um, but yeah, uh, wagers are in for young Meryl Florent against Osney Kettle Black. Uh, Osney right. Kettle Black right. pretty much rolls him. Uh, after the second pass, uh, the superior lance work of Meryl Florent has Osney reeling in the saddle, uh, but young Meryl is actually unhorsed. So he barely, barely stayed in the saddle. Uh, and then the Kettle Black just wails on him with a mace uh, until Meryl Florent uh, and his uh, graceful swordplay but he just hasn't got the mass behind him and you feel like he maybe hasn't fought against great big fucking bludgeons very much so this fine reach lord swordplay just does not work against the big ass mace uh, of the brutish weapon that the brutish Osney Kettle Black wades in with uh, and Osney Kettle Black is the victor so we are done with the squire's joust and we are moving on to the grown-up joust which some of you need to like hurry up and get ready for you're already armored uh mama bessa tries to push a few baked goods into your hand for for luck uh before you ride off to (laughs) fight and she's like oh you need a big lunch before you go jousting i think I haven't ever really watched many jousts before, but I don't want you boys doing it on an empty stomach. Or you, dearie. We need to get some meat on the bones. We'll get you married yet. She she croons uh, over Bela, concernedly trying to fatten you up. Um, oh, and we will no. head off to the, uh, the adult joust. Uh, here we have a few more to go through. Because the Squires Joust just started with a smaller field. Um, but many of them are still kind of good matches again. So uh, I think we have the time to go ahead and go through them all. Uh, and we can cut some time off Squires Joust later if we want to. But uh, because we're getting into the third pass, like everyone's pretty good. And lots of these are going to be solid matches. So uh, first up. We have Sir Justin Massey uh, against Sir Preston Greenfield of the King's Guard. So I figure anytime there's a King's Guard, you probably want to watch. 
Uh, Sir Justin uh, is a handsome guy uh, with the green, red, blue spirals on a white field. Uh, that is the, the sigil of his house. Uh, he is sworn to uh, Stannis and Dragonstone. He's one of the uh, the kind of crownlanders that, that serves them. Uh, and he is a, a quite able knight with a reputation for a tourney. And he's made pretty good work of his, of his opponents to date. But he has not been up against a knight of the King's Guard just yet. So the smart money is on Sir Preston Greenfield, uh, one of the more able members of the King's Guard. Uh, so it's no no shame on Justin Massey, uh, but Sir Preston is Sir Preston. So everybody holler when the bets are in. Good. Yeah, I'm good. Done. Uh, alrighty. Um, it takes them several passes. Uh, because again, Justin Massey is pretty good at this. Um, but uh, Preston Greenfield does get the better of him uh, by the fifth pass. Uh, it looked like in the fourth pass, uh, Greenfield almost lost his saddle. Like it was a close thing. Uh, but he rallies, comes back in the fifth pass. Uh, and is able to knock Justin Massey uh, from his horse. Uh, Sir Justin takes a moment, clambers to his feet, uh, and then the, he halloos at him from the ground uh, with a very kind of formal crown land accented, good natured and kind of good humor. Like he acknowledges he's probably about to get whooped, but he's gonna go through the motions and also be classy about it. He goes, Sir Preston, what do you choose, sir? Um, and the two of them kind of back and forth for a bit. Uh, and then they agree on axes, no shields. Uh, and then they wade in. Uh, and and uh, Sir Justin is like laughing. He's like, a novelty if little else then. Because uh, nobody's going to go axes, no shields, except for some Iron Islanders, right? But they're like, whatever, let's just do something different. Uh, and they go in, and 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 they God, run at it, guys. and fairly quickly, Sir Preston gets the better of him. Um, he's got a bit of size and just a bit of training on Sir Justin. Well done, well fought. Uh, nice, but uh... yeah, it was a fun one, and they were good natured about it. Well, that's what we wanted to see. We want to see good sportsmanship. At some point, I yell, "Axes, no shield! What madmen!" <laughs> but all in good fun. Yeah, you get a few laughs uh, from around the place, and nearby, Nathan, who's still just hanging out because you guys are supplying the wine, and Willa is supplying. <laughs> so he's like, "Fuck it, I'm just camping here for a bit," and he occasionally does it's yell. Why I'm here? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'm feeling like, like I'm feeling like you too. Maybe... Sitting with like, as long as he's got those in arm's reach. Yeah, you're just, just chilling. Uh, they're like, Squire, come over here on hands and knees so I can sit on your back. And then we'll just hang out and drink and eat all day. Yeah. Uh, we invented the camp chair. Uh, but next up is no laughing matter because the dashing Sir Lucaris Nymerian uh, is up against Sir Vardis Egan, captain of the household guard of the Eyrie in the Vale gotcha. of Aaron and sworn sword to John Aaron, Hand of the King, uh, who is watching this fight, leaning forward in his chair, uh, pointedly, hand on his chin, very thoughtful look on his face. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, Sir Vardis Egan is the soft favorite. Lucaris Nymerian has done very well, and he was squire to the Master at Arms of King's Landing, uh, but Sir Vardis Egan comes from one of the pinnacles of chivalrous culture and is the sworn champion of 
House Aaron of the Vale of Aaron. He's got a lot of, like, reputation and this is right up his alley tude on his side. Um, you can take a look. So, my hope uh, is unhorse him because I hope he's not used to falling long distances. <laughs> so, uh, votes are in. Uh, Oris tries to give you some pregame prep, uh, and he instead just kind of gives you a good natured shrug. Uh, like, <laughs> sorry, was, sorry, my lord. Uh, he beat his earlier foes too quickly for me to really notice much about him. Which Go is the, eyes. the opposite of what <laughs> you want to hear. Yeah. Uh, but Boris is like, he's trying to help. Uh, but yeah, uh, Vardis Egan made pretty good work of Ronit Connington uh, and Lord Sebastian Errol. Uh, neither of them were uh, very long matches. It was a knight of quality against a knot. Or rather, it was a knight of quality plus against a, a uh, So, uh, with no further ado, let's get those fat-ass handfuls of dice ready. So, you know it's what? gonna be fighting plus spears specialty plus animal handling uh, minus one kept die for the charge. To still roll it, you just keep one less than normal. So you're keeping fighting minus one. Uh, and he has a similar large handful of dice. So let's do this. Are you using any All special right. approach? High in the saddle yeah. or brace? Um, yeah, I'm going to brace. The one that keeps me in the saddle as well as possible. Uh, we'll do, okay. is it, can do two for two. Is it, is it the... mm -hmm. Yeah, you can choose to do it for one point or two point. It is your call. Okay, yeah, I'll do it for two points. So I got fighting, plus spears, plus uh, animal hand. Okay. Yeah, much like this. the riding this morning, jousting is another time where you have bonus dice for multiple things. So they tend to skew to very high averages, which is sometimes very good, sometimes not. Okay, I have rolled. Let me see here. A total of three. I guess I'll spend my destiny point I got earlier from our uh, good pal who has. Okay, uh, you can one. you can choose to keep an extra die, or one of the options for spending a destiny point is to make your opponent lose one kept die. Um. So, just putting it out there, uh, he is keeping some pretty good dice here. That is often going to be the case in a joust. So, depending on what your dice are looking like, uh, it's often a valid option. Yeah, you know, I'll do that. I will make him keep one less die, and I'll keep my best three here. All right. Uh, and you went with, I'm sorry, the one that lets you stay in the saddle, not the uh, one that's yeah. a flat... Yeah, not the defensive bonus one, correct? Okay. Right. Uh, and I've got a total of 16 before the penalty. So what's that, 14? Uh, for your mm -hmm. attack roll, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, that is going to be... Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, that is enough. Uh, your lance will shatter, and he now needs to make an animal roll. His lance also shatters against you uh, with a 16 on his nice. cast. Um, so now he needs to roll this. Uh, he will stay in the saddle without much trouble. Uh, yours, uh, remind me of your animal handling, like your, your passive animal handle. Passive can, is 13 yeah. with the right bonus. Yeah, this way I can give you your DCs. Uh, on okay. So your, your passive is a 13. Uh, yeah, so that's just one degree. So you just need a 9 to stay in the saddle. Okay, we've got four dice here. I'll keep three. And then add two, I believe, correct? Six plus four is 10, plus two is 12. All right, then. Uh, you are... As handily still in the saddle as he is, 
uh, you're taking eight points of damage from the uh, the lance hit itself, which I believe you've got good enough armor that we don't really have to track damage until somebody falls. Is that correct? Yeah, that should suck it all, yeah. All right, then. Uh, let's move on to the next pass. I give him a little salute as I round back around, and uh, let's do it again. Yeah! <laughs> All right, monster hand full of dice, ready to go. Oh, oh, oh nice. All right, uh, okay. are you doing the same same maneuver, by the way? I'm going or... to uh, do what I can to increase my defense this time. So. All right, so defensive, right. Uh, which gets so... you to a 15, correct? That is correct. And I've got my attack here. I've got to keep three sixes. So that's 18 minus two is 16. Nice. Uh, that is a palpable hit. Um, do, do, do. Because of his maneuver, that is two degrees of success. Uh, he also got two degrees of success against you. Uh, you oh. guys are both actually leaning into it this pass very aggressively. Um, you know, yours is a low in the saddle defensive. He actually went, uh, you know, m more aggressive um, to to just try and, and hit you harder. So it's a great pass. The lances shatter very spectacularly. Uh, and now it's time for some tests to stay in the saddle. Okay. Um, and this one is difficulty 12. Uh, because you guys both got the second degree of success. Okay, I got exactly 12 when I dropped my last dice. So. All right, you are both still in the saddle after the second pass. As I slowly uh, he... round my way around, I give the, the crowd a salute. Uh, he only got a 13, so he was struggling to stay in the saddle also. You you almost got him on that one. It was pretty pretty good time <laughs> for him to have not great dice. All right, third pass. Let's do this. All right. I drop the dice. It does not matter. I will grab my best here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep my defense up at the, uh, okay. uh, at the result of uh, attack. So. No problem. I have a total of 17 minus 2 is uh, 15. All right. All right. Uh, you both got one degree of success this time. So still no damage. Difficulty is 9 to stay in the saddle. Okay. Ooh, bad series of rolls. Uh, 10 exactly is what I got to stay in the saddle. Do you still have a destiny point up your sleeve? Nope, I've used them all. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, wait, 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 wait. Well, uh, actually, uh, I thought I mentioned this. Everybody got their normal destiny points back after last oh. session. Because we had such good role play. It was just a good concession last time. Oh, that, that so I, you I have started at your normal starting destiny. I mention it because if you spend a destiny point right now to make him keep one less die, he's going to have to lose a two that he is keeping. He rolled some bullshit. Oh. Uh, and it would be enough to make him fall. So, I, destiny, it, destiny it, it, points. I also be keeping it two if I use it that way. So I will, yeah, I will keep, I will spend it and have him keep one. All right, uh, yeah. I try to make destiny points an informed decision in part so you guys can get the biggest benefit out of chat helping you. Um, but yes, he, he got a 3-3-2-1-1. Three, three, one, one. <laughs> was his fucking bullshit ass roll. So, Sir Vardis Brand. Egan tumbles from the saddle. Uh, what is your uh, Tourney Lance damage? Oh, Tourney Lance is six. All right, this is going to take six points of damage that armor does not help with before hurrying to his feet and drawing longsword and shield. 
uh, and offering Ooh. you a salute and a challenge. I give him a salute back, and I get off my horse, and I will accept. I will take right. my spear. Uh, you have initiative in the first round. Cause that's what I've just been doing for whoever won. Uh, and yeah, Oris offers up your spear to you uh, with a uh, uh, a nod of good luck. Uh, and yeah, you just have the initiative in this fight. Uh, so let's get in there and do some work. Uh, you okay. are looking at... Uh, all right, I've got his combat defense ready. Uh, with some uh, agility here, I grab the spear, move around, and I strike at him. I have a total of 16 on the attack. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, total of four dice, so um, 20 on the attack. Yeah, you get to keep your full fighting now. You're no <laughs> right. I wasn't used to that. <laughs> yeah. So what was the total? I'm sorry. Uh, 20. 20. All right. All right. Uh, what is your base damage with the spear? A spear base damage is four. Um, All right. So I'm that's sorry, that's actually 21 because I have a plus one to this castle torch. Doesn't quite get you there. You are now one yeah. pip away from another degree of success. Mm. Uh, it was a solid roll. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's uh, so three degrees. Um, so your damage, I'm sorry, it went in one ear and right out the other. Base oh, damage was four. four base damage. Okay. Uh, so that will get two points through. Uh, you're able to batter at him, uh, stabbing at the weak points in his armor. Uh, nothing gets through, but you know you're kind of bashing and, and, and battering at him pretty well. Uh, he retreats a few steps, then re-interposes the shield and uses it to lead the way with a flurry of longsword strikes where, where the high die uh, was swiftly followed by lots of not very high dice. I'm sure you are feeling for him. I feel bad, yeah. He's a good opponent. Uh, I, I feel strongly for him. That is an 18. What is your combat defense, sir? Combat defense is 11. Uh, so two degrees. Da, 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 da. It's going to be eight points of damage, which, again, I believe your armor will soak. Uh, so uh, you yeah. are up. Yes. You definitely you feel like you got the better of him in that first uh, hurried exchange of blows. Okay, I uh, try to knock the um, long sort of way to get inside him, and I swing again. Trying to find some sort of purchase between the armor. Uh, another 20 to attack. 21. Uh, so, same as last time, correct? Uh, correct. On my own map? Okay. So, two points will get through. He is not real happy about that. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, he's still not quite taking injuries or wounds at the tourney level, but he is going to come back at you pretty rough. Uh, there we go. Cool. Much more of an average roll which is a good thing for him and a not great thing for you. That is a 23, sir. Okay. Yeah, uh, my defense is, like I said, a, a total of uh, 11, so. Is that an 11 in your armor? That uh, feels really yes. high. You're still using a shield uh, or something? Current armor, show. Oh, nine, nine, I'm sorry, it's nine. Okay, uh, I'm just like, well, that's a really high combat defense. Uh, and even yeah, a nine that, is that, still too high. pretty solid. Okay, so um, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's been a while since we needed it. We've been changing stats around every fight for a while. Um, oh, right. so that Castle Forge weapon makes it three. That one will be 12 points of damage uh, okay. before armor. So something will get through at least. Uh, yeah, and my armor is nine, so that should be like three goes through. Yep. So three points of damage. Uh, and then the initiative is yours again, sir. Okay. I give him a grin. This is a lot of fun for me. Well struck. 
and I attack back. I've got... That sounded ugly. Another 21. Same okay, thing. two more points is enough that he has to take an injury, uh, and that is going to make him not very happy. He is going to attack aggressively. Oh, I'm going to say, no. shall we call it here? And then it clearly dies. Yeah. So. so you're like well struck, and his eyes narrow as he suspects you of insult. Like, because like, you're not supposed to compliment your opponent uh, mid fight. So he kind of bull rushes at you with the shield uh, to kind of batter the spear point away. And he starts doing kind of big, angry overhand swings. Um, oof. Uh, that is a 28. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. That is a 30 uh, because he's keeping, a, he's keeping an extra guy, die because he's aggressive acting. It's just that last die was not a great one. Um, but against a nine, that is five times base damage. Uh, so that is 20. Okay. Uh, mm. yeah, my armor sucks nine, so that's 11 plus where I have. What do I have to do to take an injury? Uh, so to mitigate damage, you can take an injury. Uh, which lets you ignore, or it kind of gets damage resistance equal to your endurance on one attack, and then you get a minus one to your totals until that heals. Or you can take a wound, which just lets you completely ignore one attack, like it does no damage, but you have a minus one kept die until it heals. What's the total amount of uh, damage I can take? Uh, I have to do something. It's your endurance times three. Okay, so endurance times three is nine. I already took three, so I have six. You got 11 through. If I take a wound, uh, take an injury, it's still not going to be enough. I'll take a wound. Just so you know, you can take multiple injuries if you would oh, rather. Um, like, you're allowed to take more yes. than one injury from one attack. I don't know if the math would make that. Uh, a good choice right now, but I just want to remind everybody, it is a choice. So it's your uh, call. Yeah. I will take two injuries to get through and uh, find okay. some perks to this attack. Indeed he does. Alright, uh, and now it, you are up again. And he's left uh, the open uh, from that uh, that flurry. He was hoping to, to really do some work that time. I will take advantage of the openness. I will also aggressively attack. Alright. Uh, this exchange may well settle the matter. Here we go. Crush All him, right. crush him, crush him. Come on, Violent, violent, violent. 22 plus 1 is 23 minus the other one from the wound is 22. Uh, sorry, 21. Same total again. Uh, <laughs> like a yeah. of, that's just what you, you just... You, you roll blackjack. That's that's what I do. Yeah. Good one. Um, all right. Um, and that one does not give him an extra... Or no. Uh, yeah, because his combat defense is lower. Sorry, everybody. One second. I got to double check on the exact modifier of some. Yeah, don't roll doing something sneaky. <laughs> uh, I'm double checking what the modifier is for that for the aggressive attack because it's not called aggressive attack. At least reckless attack? At it because I can't I couldn't reckless. find it. I couldn't find it under aggressive <laughs> or all out. And I'm like god damn it where is this? And then I was like oh that's right it's in like the back end of the combat chapter with advanced actions or whatever. Uh, yeah, rec cause... reckless attack, greater action. All right, so it's five from your combat defense. So that was that was what I had to double check. Um, because yeah, that's just a straight up extra degree of success uh, because of what the modifier is. Uh, Cause I was like, shit, the math is there. I don't remember if it's a three or a five. So uh, what was your base damage? I apologize. Base damage was four. Four, correct? All right, so that's actually four extra points that's gonna get through on this one. So that is six 
he is going to have to take another injury from that. Uh, so yeah, you're beating him with the power of math. Uh, you are both down two injuries. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Thing. Um, that said, he is the champion of the Vale of Aaron and yada yada yada. You aren't a bastard or a woman, so I'm not going to make him... Uh, some of your opponents, depending on who they're up against, are going to have to be occasionally making, like, will rolls to not continue attacking aggressively. You are the only true-born son of House Nymerian. <laughs> uh, so he's not going to continue recklessly and aggressively and overconfidently attacking you. Um, he is not offended that you are fighting him like you would be against a bastard or a woman. Um, but this wow. is still a pretty solid hit. Um, that's a that is a 22 or no, I you had to take two more. That is a 20 uh, after his uh, additional injuries. Uh, but I believe that is still going to be three degrees, so 12 points of damage. Okay. Uh, 12 armor rating is 9, I'll let 3 through. I'll take the uh, damage here. Okay, and then let's you are up five. again. Um, let's do this again. Let's let's lead yep. back again. You guys are wearing each other down. It's, it's getting <laughs> brutal here. Hopefully, hopefully this will work. Um, uh, yeah, I will recklessly attack. Seventeen total. Of all the modifiers, seventeen. All right, um, and that was back against his regular combat defense. So that's two points that's going to get through because it's the same as when you roll a blackjack. Um, it's the same degree uh, against him. Um, that is going to be another injury. That is the Whoa. last. That's the last injury he can take. Uh, so he's actually going to aggressive attack again. Because he knows that you're getting the better of him uh, long term here. And he right. needs to finish this. I was hoping that would end it, but we'll he, see. Uh, he maybe did just finish it. His kept dice are 66665. Six, 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 uh, That's out. Uh, uh, and then a four he... from the aggressive attack. But it's this is going to be a palpable hit. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, Robert, that. Um, use a destiny, if he uses a destiny point to keep a thing, you can use a destiny point to cancel it out. Yeah, to this isn't if... this isn't from a destiny point. This is from the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the attack option. Dang. Um, so you are combat defense six with the aggressive attack in play oh, no. against his twenty nine. <laughs> after all the injury modifiers. It's probably not going to matter. Uh, so, uh, this is going to be a big-ass hit. Uh, you can take a wound. Take a wound to ignore uh, it. Man. If take you want to be at minus one die on stuff. Um, Yikes! It's, yeah, and remember, yeah, wounds are, yeah, wounds are bigger it's... trouble, but he's also at the cusp of needing to take wounds. So yeah, you're, I, you're hanging uh, in there. I am also the firstborn son of House Nymerian. I will take the wound. All right then. Uh, you, the, you are up again at the next turn. Uh, you are now at minus one kept die. So I believe you're keeping three most of the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the injuries do still apply. Okay. So it's you know minus three and minus one die or whatever you're up to. Okay, let's uh, let's do this aggressively again. I'm trying to end this. All right, both both fighters are just wailing on each other with nair oh, an eye to roll. defense uh, as they stay close and are brutally hammering at one another. There's the occasional shield bass tossed in. The hammer strikes with the hilt of the sword. Um, both of you are just being as brutal as you can be to pummel at your heavily armored opponents with the crowd watching and roaring. What is the total coming up to? All right, it's not great. It's a uh, 15, 14. <laughs> now the good news is he did aggressively attack. 
so he is down to combat <laughs> defense two, but that does only get two points through. Yeah, uh, and he is I use the desk point now if you want to. Yeah, you... yeah, uh, yeah. Give him destiny. He is not going to aggressively attack uh, because he knows that he's leaving himself open. He's gonna hunker behind his shield and fall back on that formal combat training, yada yada yada. Um, so this is not an aggressive one because he feels like he's got you on the ropes. Uh, he kind of does. That is not a terrible roll, but it's not what his last roll was. Uh, so if that's any consolation, it's not a string of highest pips possible. Oh, that's a 22, and then injuries makes it an 18 uh, against your combat. That's a 7 0. That's going to be enough degrees of success. You're looking at another wound uh, to stay in it because um, that's going to be times four damage. That's going to be 16 damage coming at you. Yeah. Uh, 17. Uh, as an aside, um, you will you heal one wound at a time for the most part on the rolls to heal wounds uh, so taking a second one uh would probably put you at a disadvantage in the next round of the joust potentially like that's where you're, you're at, at this uh, point and or at the melee i just don't want mm -hmm. these penalties to catch you guys unawares yeah, if yeah. you want to go all in on a given fight you can but don't forget that you're still signed up for the melee and stuff later. I don't want him to bite you in the ass later on in the tourney is all. So, your call. Unfortunately, I think he has me. I will go ahead and I will submit to him. So, take the damage and, and concede. Um, yeah, you got him to, to four injuries. Uh, and he was about to start having to take wounds. So, he's definitely breathing hard. Um, he lifts his visor, and you can see like you jostled him enough with helmet hits that he's Ooh. he's got a bloody nose uh, and stuff, and he's looking at you kind of stiffly and formally with half-hooded eyes. Like, I can't believe this guy did this good. You know, it's not a pleasantly incredulous. It's a very proud incredulous, you know? Um, but he does very stiffly and formally uh, give you a salute and then turn and salute and bow to his liege lord, John Aaron, etc., etc. Um, but like, uh, people aren't throwing fruit at you or nothing. Like you didn't. I've, uh, you did I've not. Like clambered on my feet, poorly. salute him back, and then slowly make it back to me uh, to the tent because I'm I, I pretty so beat up. He looks oh, so like close. Beat to shit. Yeah, that was uh, that was a hard fought round, um, and and like that was you hung in there better than I think we thought you would, uh, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but that also gets us to six o'clock, uh, which means we are out of time Ooh. for the day, boys and ghouls. Uh, so we are gonna pick up mid tournament round uh, in a couple of weeks. So we will see you all on the other side of that. Luckily, the people that didn't get to joust yet this round did get to ride in the race and all that. So Bela still got to sling some dice, uh, and Bannon still got to win something badass. Uh, so everyone uh, that wanted to roll a bunch of dice and do stuff got to, but we are out of time for today, all of our fans and viewers in chat. So we appreciate you guys coming by. Uh, we hope that you're enjoying our mixture of tragic comma dramedy uh, because Westeros is a pretty grim place but we try to find some laughs where we can and we try to make sure that the NPCs are lovable so everybody feels it when they die uh, so <laughs> oh no for us, everybody we had a good time we hope you guys had a good time too uh, we will see you all back here in two weeks uh, as we uh, come back to Westeros in the middle of the third round of the joust for Princess Marcella's name day tourney. Uh, and I promise you'll get to see some Bobby B next time because by mid afternoon he will have roused himself from his hungover slumber and he wants to go watch somebody fucking fight. So, 
We'll see Bobby B back here in two weeks. We'll see the rest of you back here in two weeks. Hope everybody had a good time. Uh, and we will see you all back here. And before that, who was our most recent to claim the throne? Ash. Uh, was it Ash? It is. I stole from the viewers the last moment. Ash, <sighs> you, get to, uh, you get to do the royal boon again before next week. So we got some time to think it over, and we'll see who you want to grant a boon to. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for uh, keeping the Iron Throne active uh, this week. It was a good time to definitely helped everybody out with those destiny points. So I'm sure the players also yeah. appreciate it. So thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.